too kind. You Thank are you, too everybody. Kind. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the first annual Head in the Office Award Show. We are going to be honoring every crazy thing, every crazy person to exist every this year. Every bad person. That's right. And every bad thing to happen. Yeah. We, every great headline. Listen, we, over the last few weeks, we got many nominees. We got many people that were uh, put up for awards, some people more than others, many events, many headlines. Oh, just, yeah. Uh, what can I say? A lot happens. A lot happens this year. Our first full year doing the podcast, end to end. That's right. We're here to bookend it. <laughs> we, yeah. and we're here to commemorate the um the certain the year that we had because it certainly Look, was a year. This was um one of the years ever. I will <laughs> this say is one of the most years. Yeah, this is the this is yeah. You're right. This is the first year that we've done the the podcast beginning to end. Exactly. Uh, very exciting for us. It's a milestone, really. Absolutely nice um, little bookends. And this is the uh, this is the last episode of the year. Oh and my that's, gosh. That's very exciting. The and next episode comes out on New Year's Day for I the think patrons. So. I if think we so. record on New Year's Day. Yeah, you know, we'll see all, if that happens. It's all subject to like uh, whatever happens the night before. It's all subject to um, the winds of fate. If you will. <laughs> exactly. And the winds of fate have chosen our winners today. And we'll get there <laughs> in just a moment. But as always, as we start every episode, uh, first off, I want to thank all of you for, for getting us to the end of the year. Oh, for absolutely. carrying us through this um, particularly bad year Very for precarious. new stories, as we will see as we'll go over. Uh, so I want to thank all of you for sticking with us. Us. Welcome the new people that have joined recently, maybe over the last few months. Special um, thanks to all the patrons. That's, we'll oh, we'll get to you guys at the end. Definitely. But it, extra special thanks to everyone who's been here the whole year. That's right. For all of you who have been listening from January 1st to December 31st. And you know what? Round of applause for you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Round of applause. Ooh, yeah. Round of applause for you guys. And uh, before we get into the episode, before we start giving out our awards to our beautiful, beautiful nominees, I'm going to remind you all to go check out oh the Patreon. Go check out the TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. We're almost to 1,000 on YouTube. Oh, get us there. Say. Get us there, and we'll be uh, forever grateful. We can do even more cool things with the show. For um, sure. Because we've got a loaded 2023 coming up. Absolutely. And uh, you, you guys are going to be right there with us. But you also want to help out the show. As always, before we get into our awards, we got to read our five-star reviews. Of course. Today's no different. Just because it's an award show, we're not going to leave out our beautiful five stars. Exactly. Exactly. They, they they support the show. They get us going. And we got two. Discoverable. We got one that's on Apple. And then we got one that's, that's on uh, Instagram. That's on Instagram because they couldn't fill out an app. Because I because uh, YouTube Spotify listener. I'll just start with this one. Okay, okay. From Robert Ronnie, a Spotify YouTube listener, five star review, seven point three out of five stars. These two do a great job of mm. conveying the real mm. feelings of the people, and I love that Freddie from iCarly had a socialist Whoa. glow up. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Cut the show! Cut the show! <laughs> yeah, we're done. No, this has ruined it. This is this is your fault. That's the best character arc of the century. <laughs> but for real, keep up the great work. This pod is a must listen for the working class America. Nice, nice. Shout out Robert Ronnie. Just a reminder again: if you listen on Spotify, mm -hmm. you listen on YouTube, you listen, or you have on an Android, Google Play, like Nikki Nine Lives, uh -huh. or anything else, or you live in Canada mm -hmm. and your app reviews aren't showing up, or if your app reviews just not showing up, shoot us a DM. Exactly, and we'll get it read right on here. Yeah, we'll get you covered. We wouldn't want to discriminate against you green text message users. Um, exactly. Although we do. I think just about everything we Although used to in record my, in is my an Apple product. In my personal life, I do discriminate <laughs> well, against course. green text message users. Uh, maybe we can get sponsored by Apple one day. If we I'm were, ever added in a group chat with you. Huh? We record on an Apple phone. I'll sniff you out. Uh, we got a Mac that we record on. I use my iPad I to use read the show Mac notes. I my Mac to do the show notes. So uh, Apple, reach out. So, <laughs> so I'm saying. Apple? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, uh, they got me there. Our second and last review, though, similar theme, is from T-Man7176, subject line, fantastic show. They say, I'm so happy to finally... Have two political pod or have two political podcast hosts close to my age. As someone with my own political machinations and dreams of running for something in the future, it's heartening to hear those in my generation share many, uh, many of my own ideals. In addition, I always appreciate new perspectives on the biggest news stories of the day. Great show, great guys, great insight. Look, T man, oh if you goodness. ever if you ever run for office uh, and you get elected, I'm going to expect a position. Uh, absolutely, put me on your staff. I'm gonna expect a cabinet position. Like you know, but. With the sheer amount that we talk about optics and messaging, uh -huh. you would think that we would have gotten picked up already. That's, That's all I'm what say. I'm saying. That's all. That's I'm what I'm saying. Say. Where, where are the campaigns that are like us as campaign managers that are, are yeah. paying me buku bucks? Bind you exactly. I've like, got about three months for you to get on me before I have to get a real job. Real God. Like I we we give it out for free. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you would think that someone would die. Imagine what we could give you if you paid us. If I didn't oh have to face material goodness, insecurity, son. come on. If I didn't have to sit at the library for hours on end. I think it's time, though, to get right into our nominees. Absolutely. I think it's time to get into each of our categories. I got a little special something planned for after we're done with that. Okay, but we'll get I don't even know what that is. Exactly. He doesn't. Oh I haven't told God. him. I haven't told him. So 
Again, welcome to the Hitto Award Show. We want to first congratulate all of the beautiful nominees. We want to give a special thanks to everybody that nominated somebody. Oh, um, everybody I'm sure that voted. I, Shouts oh, yeah. out to Shout you. Shout out to all of you that voted and participated in this. It was a great little exercise in community engagement. Exactly. Uh, and we have... Um, we just, just got to thank all, uh, thank all of our audience you know, members. Today. Now we know who the real fans are. That's right. That's all I'm going to say. That's right. That's thank all I'm going to say. Just want to special thanks to everyone watching here and at home. Uh, oh, it's, it's great yeah, to see you in the audience. Home. Oh, my goodness. Just uh, it, It's great to see everybody, especially after COVID. We haven't been able to do an award show this, in person. This episode so recorded with a live studio audience, of course. Just shout out to you guys. Yeah. yeah. Give yourself a round of applause, applause for yourself. Oh, my goodness. So we're going to go through each category. Okay, I'm going to uh-huh. list the nominees. We're going to give our take of who deserves the W. And we'll see if that coincides with the Hitto community. Uh, and then we'll we'll move on. We'll make quick work of these guys. Exactly. So let's do uh, winners by category. How about that? Okay. Starting off first with our most unhinged national news story. That's a good one. Now, the, the criteria for this here is a news story, obviously, that reached national headlines uh, day over day. was a big deal for a lot of people. Uh, and wasn't necessarily isolated to like a single headline. Because we do have yes. a category for craziest political headline coming up. So these stories are, number one, Ron DeSantis doing human trafficking at Martha's Vineyard. Number two, Herschel Walker's entire Senate race, because it was Nash, all a doozy. Naturally. Roe v. Wade being overturned. It's a bad one. Trump's Mar-a-Lago FBI raid, and Kanye West becoming an actual Nazi. Now, before we announce the winner here, I, I, I think, maybe, maybe it may be controversial, I think there's an obvious winner here. Okay. I, I think it's Kanye. I you think, think Kanye. Kanye is the most unhinged news story. Roe v. Wade, obviously the worst thing to happen yeah, this yeah. year. Gotta be, sure. But like the, the things that come out of it aren't necessarily like unhinged. It's just straight bad. Yeah. It's just tragic, dare I say. Yeah. However, I, Kanye? Yeah, I would see I, I worry I worry about putting our money on Kanye. Okay. Because of recency bias, right? Like that's the thing that happened most recently that was the most unhinged. So perhaps that's we're true. that's just something that's fresh in the mind. Oh God, the quotes. But Ro- <laughs> yeah, if this was a contest of what was you know the most harmful national news story, what's the worst thing to happen this year in general? Roe v. Wade. It, I mean, it would have to be Roe v. Wade. No diff. Right? Like there, there, there wouldn't really be any contest between Roe v. Wade. Like if we're doing drafts, right? And we're making our NBA All Star first team round draft pick of, for of worst <laughs> thing to yeah. happen this year. If we're looking for the worst player we can uh-huh. find, it's Roe v. Wade. You know return right the Dobbs v. Jackson decision it's absolutely got to be uh but because Kanye is on the list and because we're talking unhinged and not necessarily directly harmful Kanye turning into a Nazi uh, it's got to be right it's like it's like when I think when I think about unhinged I think of not only like crazy things to happen I think of sudden things to happen yeah unexpected that happen just (laughs) out of nowhere Mm -hmm. Even no though there, there is a clear escalation mm-hmm. with the Kanye situation, I never would have thought the escalation would have got to this stage. At least with Roe v. Wade, we've known since like last year that things were probably going to be bad. Mm-hmm. It's just my money's on Kanye. And here's the thing, right? Like, talking about the other ones, Herschel Walker's entire Senate race, pretty unhinged, pretty crazy, Absolutely. pretty unexpected. But in the context of all the other Republicans running, I don't know if you can give this one the cake. Well, for sure. Simply because you had people like Dr. Oz, you had Blake Masters looking like a school shooter all the mm-hmm. time. You have uh, Katie Hobbs, not Katie Hobbs, uh, who was she running against? Carrie Lake. Carrie Lake in Arizona, just being absolutely crazy, still trying to contest the election mm-hmm. to this mm-hmm. day. So I don't, I, Herschel Walker, definitely a contender, an definitely unhinged contender. national news story, but so I, I don't know if he gets m- it. Maybe he cracks top five moments that happened this year. Yeah. Maybe the debate, it cracks up there. Maybe him getting an abortion and people, pe- not him getting an abortion, him forcing, forcing someone to get an abortion, else, yeah. and then seeing the entire Republican media sphere rally against him saying Herschel Walker is going to do more though and with your money that's got to be a top moment that's got to yeah. be an unhinged moment but was, does yeah. it take the Kanye saga I, I don't think it could be the Kanye saga the only thing here that I would think could contest the Kanye saga would be Ron DeSantis doing human trafficking not only Absolutely. because he did it but because others participated in it in it following what he did like copied yes. they copied him yes they sent him to what DC uh, Martha's Vineyard, of course, and I it was at other places as Greg well. Greg Abbott famously, uh, this is like the only big thing that happened this week. Greg Abbott famously this week, two days ago on Christmas Eve, mm-hmm. bust a busload of migrants to Kamala Harris's DC doorstep. That's crazy on Christmas Eve. That's not very the Christ-like. Human, if this was most human rights abuses, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would win. <laughs> he would win. They'd get it. Not only because it's one human trafficking. But two, because once you do that, you know that they just don't give a fuck what happens to them afterwards. Absolutely. Like, it's cold outside, dog. We just got hit with a massive snowstorm One across the, the nation. One of the worst snowstorms in Michigan. It's supposed to be, like, the coldest winter in, like, 20 years. Yeah. I mean, you could make the argument that Greg Abbott did it out of his own hospitality. 
uh, because Texas is what facing lots of power yeah, outages. So Texas maybe he's also just had a storm, and thousands of homes are without power. That, why am I not surprised? Uh, this seems very similar to almost a year ago at this point. Almost this exactly last February. Year. Yeah. This year. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. That's crazy. What a year we've had, folks. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but it, do we want to get into the winner? I, I think we do want to get in the winner of this one. Let's so, see. Let's see what the community voted. Is it time for the drum roll? It hit a drum roll for drum me. Drum roll, the winner please. Is, the winner is. Kanye West becoming an actual Got Nazi. To. It, that it is, had to be. That is what you all voted for most unhinged national news story. I can't say I disagree, but um, I just want to thank all the nominees. Congratulate all of you. You were all in the running <laughs> you were for all winning. Awful. You're all very terrible <laughs> news stories. Uh, so congratulations to all of you for your nominations. But Kanye uh, becoming a Nazi takes the award. Oh my goodness. Well, I, what do you think he would say? say if he was here to give a speech? <laughs> <laughs> What would be his like, victory speech? I think he'd cut us off, first yeah. and foremost, before we could even announce it. Mm -hmm. Talk about how he is the most unhinged. I think that he would rejoice mm -hmm. in being the most unhinged. Um, he'd probably say, you must not have let, it, uh, let any Jewish people vote if he, I won. He would probably would start it. saying some slurs, and we'd oh, have to cut yeah. him off. We'd have to cut his mic. And then he'd probably respond to that by saying, look who you can't criticize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Voltaire once said <laughs> But uh, Kanye's not here, so I guess we'll never know. Yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't get Kanye in the studio today. That's right. That's right. So next, we have our nominees for the most insane political headline. These nominees are just direct quotes of actual headlines. Doesn't yes. have to be a national story. Doesn't have to be specific to you know any kind of drama or controversy. Just the craziest headlines you all could find. You want to you tag team this one? I, I think we could tag team this tag one. Team? You got you got first. The first one is. This is a headline from the Ohio Capitol Journal. It is GOP passes bill aiming to root out suspected transgender female athletes with genital inspection. Nice, nice. Famously from the mandatory penis expansion episode. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> one from another unhinged episode. <laughs> the next headline, quote, exclusive Van Taylor accused of extramarital affair with ISIS bride, mm -hmm. abuse of power, Rim job text from the <laughs> national file. That was that was from an episode we did in March. Also that titled Rim Job Text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next one is Biden recalls putting dead dog on Republican voters doorstep as a young politician. I do not remember this story. <laughs> I, did, at all. I did not see that. Fuck. Gray headline though. It is real. I, I checked all of these. Oh, so good, so good. Next. Herschel Walker is now constantly showing people his fake police badge. Pretty crazy. That, that was, was a crazy, crazy moment. We covered that one. Last one. Dr. Oz apparently considers himself something of a piece of Molier, <laughs> which was uh, another fun one. So who, one, who do you think takes the cake? Who do you think takes the cake? I think this is yet another unfair category. Why is that? I think Rim Job Text has to take it. That, I, that's what I'm thinking as well. Uh, maybe I'm biased because we did like a whole episode section on this topic, on this story specifically. We did, like a whole episode on mandatory penis inspections, though. That's true. That's true. Which is, it's also just it's so unhinged, to so me, crazy. To me, it's got to be between those two, right? It's got to yeah. be between rim job text and mandatory penis inspections, or I guess they phrase it what genital inspections. But it, we know what it is. But like, equally, like the Biden putting a dead dog on on the doorstep of a Republican that one that's came like, out of nowhere. It's a sleeper hit. It, it's a sleeper hit. It's out of nowhere, but like it's kind of commonplace. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like Absolutely. Like Mitt Romney tied a dead dog to the top of his roof for fucking whatever so for, like for it's, real i don't I, that's what i've heard <laughs> this, <laughs> that's what my sources tell me yeah i actually went and put a dead dog on um <laughs> <laughs> yeah well people do that to their political enemies you know what i'm saying it's <laughs> yeah a, of a, course of course it's a common thing to do to get back at somebody i don't think it's that big of a deal and then herschel walker and the dr oz one both crazy obviously but like we said in the face of other crazier news stories exactly I don't know and even in the face of other news stories that they've been a part of yeah i, I don't know if it's like especially with dr oz denying the armenian genocide that one was that one didn't get much attention that though. one didn't we, we talked about it because it's so funny because like like you live in America. There's no reason why yeah. you'd ever need to do this. Oh, I mean, the big one. I mean, even, yeah, even Dr. Oz was a puppy killer, right? There are lots of puppies. Oh, that <laughs> was headlines. another headline, too. Yeah. Dr. Oz, oh, the puppy goodness. killer. Dr. Oz, the pee drinker. Uh, Dr. Oz, the genocide denier. But let's be real. Dr. Oz speaking in front of Hitler car. <laughs> That's foreshadowing, <laughs> That's honestly. true. But let's be real, though. Puppy killing, I, I think it's nothing in comparison to <laughs> mandatory <laughs> penis inspections and a rim job text with the ISIS bride. Yeah, for, from a, a running congressman, a sitting congressman. Uh, that's insane. Someone with a with a with a seat of power. Uh -huh. One of the most powerful people. Yeah, he just like me for real. <laughs> <laughs> can can you blame him though? Yeah, really. Yeah. So do we uh ready for a drum roll? Drum roll? I is think it, we're ready to time? announce our time? Uh, announce our Let's winner. Go. Let's get it going. The winner is GOP passes bill to root out suspected transgender female athletes with genital inspection. 
Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Uh, this one was submitted by Cincy Alex. He dropped his information on the forum, so I'll shout him out for submitting this one. Let's and go. the previous one was submitted by Carson. So shout out to you for submitting uh, Kanye becoming an actual Nazi. And the rim job text was actually a hitto choice. That was it one is. that I put it in is. there. It is. That's that crazy. I, I, I personally think that the rim job text should win. Yeah. Yeah. I, I personally think because how often. Well, how often do you really see mandatory penis inspections? I think the beauty in the mandatory penis inspection headline, mandatory genital inspections, sorry. Yeah, come on, Gage. Let's I think be the inclusive. beauty comes from the meme becoming reality. The beauty in it is that art really does, a life really does imitate art. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, because the argument when we're talking about uh, transgender athletes is always like, well, just transgender people in general. Yeah. When you're trying to like, people are so focused on determining what your gender is, so fo so hyper-focused on like, are you a man, are you a woman? It's like, we always ask, how are you going to like figure this out, right? Like and in pr <laughs> practically, how are you going to do this? And they just come out and say, oh, we're going to check. And, and then, because like the joke is like, what are you going to do? Look at my dick? Yeah. And, yes. And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With the power of the state, in fact. And if your school doesn't follow those rules, we're going to take your funding and, away. And if you refuse, you're fucked, kid. Uh-huh. That's uh -huh. nuts. It's nuts. It's kind of it's kind of similar to the Martha's Vineyard story uh, because we'd always I don't know if we joked about it necessarily, but we're always they're always complaining like liberal cities never have to deal with immigrants. How come liberal cities yeah. never have to? Uh, and then they just shipped them away. Uh -huh. like, just did human trafficking to prove a point. <laughs> the cruelty is the point. I and guess. it's also just like even with the Martha's Vineyard point, it's like, yeah, they're cities in the middle of the country. Like they don't have to deal with this. They're yeah. not a border state. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Geography, brother. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Look at a map, brother. Uh, time to move on to our most out of pocket local news story. Ooh, this see, category. This, this is one I'm excited for. Pretty, pretty, pretty some sleepers here. Pretty self explanatory. This one's dedicated to the most insane, unhinged, out of pocket stories that happen on a local level. Yes. Didn't necessarily reach national news, might have reached some, you know, Fox News, CNN broadcast, but we're never the focus of, you know, large scale political outrage. Not, not Fox News primetime, maybe Fox News during the day. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Just things that, that reached the news, but were very localized, very small, exactly. but, you know, caught the attention of the people. Things that in. act as fillers in the 24-hour news cycle. Yeah, if, if we could summarize it, things that we cover, because we focus way too much on these things. Facts. But things that other people would have forgotten about by now. Exactly, and that's why you love us. And we got some major contenders. That's why you love us. Uh, you may be able to call a flag on this one, because this one kind of did reach national headlines a little bit, but was okay. a smaller part of a larger story. That's number one being Madison Cawthorn getting caught naked with his cousin on tape and humping him. <laughs> uh, that was crazy. <laughs> that was, but that was more local that to was a good uh, one. his race, his yeah. race in particular. Yeah. The next one is the uh, Minnesota GOP in the state legislature accidentally legalizing edibles and other thc products oh based uh, cool. that was a good story that i don't i don't know if we covered that we might have joked about it on the side yeah um but that was a fun one that i remember okay uh next one is this is just a, a headline because no I, I couldn't summarize it any better there's no way it's quote this is from vice by the way i'm just really stressed out arizona republican charged with masturbating near preschool <laughs> That's crazy. That's, no, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's, exactly, that's wild. That's wild. Uh, our fourth one, our fourth nominee. Seems to be a crowd favorite. Is uh, D the Davison Michigan School Board removing sexual trauma help books from the library? That's a good one. That was the one that's we covered. That's one we covered extensively. Close and the to last home. one. This one's a callback from maybe the first or second episode of this year. Yeah. Back in January. It was when a candidate, Shelley Luther, called an Asian American politician in her state legislature an enemy of the people because he was Chinese. <laughs> That one was a, that's a banger right there. An Asian of the CCP. Yeah, yeah. So oh my who do you who do you think takes the KQ? Who wins this it? This one, I, I I don't know. See, the the issue is like all of these are good, right? Yeah. Every single one of these headlines is. Anyone, good. anyone could deserve it. And I think they they all are contenders. However, maybe it's because I was so caught off guard by it. Maybe because it was so local that it was a story we didn't cover. But the I'm just really stressed out. Uh -huh. Arizona Republican charged the masturbating near preschool. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That one might have to take the cake for me. Like, I, I don't know who this guy is, right? Like, exactly. We didn't cover it's this on the so show. local. I don't know who he is. A, a lot of things happened this year that we didn't get to cover because, you know, human history and all that. Exactly. Um, but the fact that he thought I'm really stressed out was like an excuse <laughs> <laughs> or somehow exonerated him from doing it. That's crazy in that and of itself. Crazy. Like a preschool? Especially in the midst of like a, a nationwide moral panic around transgender people grooming kids. <laughs> And then he, and then like an Arizona Republican, <laughs> I'm going to guess as a straight cis man, uh -huh. was beaten off in front of a preschool. 
Because he's nuts. stressed out? Like, not, dog. Literally nuts. Like, I've been stressed out before. Yeah, literally <laughs> n- I've been stressed out before. I'm stressed N- right now. <laughs> never have I done that. No. <laughs> never <laughs> never had had the inclination to do that. What makes it weird, I wonder if he has any kids that go to that preschool, or if oh. he was just, like, kind of, like, there, you know? He's just waiting for, to pick up his kid, and he's like, oh, shit, man, I'm so he's stressed like, out. fuck, dude. I don't have time to go home. Yeah, I don't uh, know, man. That's crazy, though. That but it's, crazy. like, worse if he doesn't have kids there. I don't know what's worse, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How, we'll let you guys decide in your minds what's worse. Exactly. But uh, for now, I think it's time to announce our winner. It's time to hit the drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. The winner of most out-of-pocket local news story is... I'm just really stressed out. Arizona Republican. Got you. Got you. Got you. <laughs> no, Dave, it's, like, it's like there's just one. There's one in every category, I yeah. feel like. At least to me. That has just stood out uh, far in the way. Yeah, that might the that might, worst headline. That might change as we move on. But shout out to Hope for submitting that one. Thank you uh, for participating in our nomination submission. form. That's a crazy submission. That's one of those submissions that you wait all year for. Yeah, I mean, I I had I remember seeing this story and people talk about it back when it happened. Uh-huh. I don't think we ever put it in the show notes. Other things might have been happening at that time. Yeah. There was many episodes that were far too loaded as is. Um, but I remember seeing this and I completely forgot about it. I memory banked it. It may okay. have been one of the things where I was like, too crazy to actually have happened. Let's move on. For real. But just to see this again, just to see it pop up and make it into the award show and win an award. It's like, it's got to be real. Yeah, to win one of the most prestigious awards of the year, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah. Uh, moving on, though. Okay. We have okay, a, a, next? a hotly contested category right here. It is oh. most abhorrent Democrat of 2022. Absolutely packed race here. We've got, you yeah, know, this is a this is a tight race for a couple of them. We've got Kirsten Cinema. <laughs> we've got Joe Manchin, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, and Kamala Harris. Um, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were uh, hitto choices for okay. Democrats. Yes. Uh, because, you know, Democrats were pretty awful this year, but I think it's pretty clear who the villain of this year was and who has been. For sure. And that's definitely the Republican Party. For sure. Um, but out of these choices, I mean, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema are right there. Oh, absolutely. They are, they are the two top contenders in my mind. The race is neck and neck. Yep. It's a real nail biter. Like you can make an argument for either. I'm down to the skin of my teeth. But I'm going to I'm going to make an argument for one in particular. Okay. For a very specific reason. Okay. And it's a recent news story. Oh. And it is Kirsten Cinema switching sides or becoming an independent, I suppose. See, I was thinking about that, but I, I would still put my money on Joe Manchin. Okay. We've got to split house tonight, oh, folks. Shoot. We got to split and you guys will make the decision. <laughs> Make your argument for Joe Manchin then. Make my argument for Joe Manchin. Just all of the things at the beginning of the year with Build Back Better. Yeah. Just every single See, thing that he gutted. But Kirsten Cinema was right there along with him. That's so true. She Kirsten was, Cinema also made it a point yeah. to hit the thumbs down on the minimum wage to, to yeah. fuck over every most Americans. Yeah, and see, that's why that's why I was thinking, you know, you can make a good argument for either of these. I would accept either of these as an answer from the that's community. True. That's from, right. I wouldn't, as a community I wouldn't be upset. Exactly, because, I mean, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema were voting almost the same way the whole time. Uh-huh. They both were the only two holdouts to not let us um, overturn the filibuster and, and get rid of it entirely. They were one of the two holdouts for the $15 wage. They both were voting against big changes to... Uh, or, or big things within Build Back Better. Yes, they but, they didn't want any any expansions to Medicare. No dental, yeah. no vision, no hearing. But Kirsten Cinema specifically won switching sides to become an independent yes. purely for electoral gain, just so that she can win her election in twenty twenty four, or play spoiler. Yeah, for or, the or Democrat play spoiler in twenty twenty four. And her also coming out against just raising taxes just in general uh-huh. like no tax raises that to me just cements it also couple that with the fact that she's in arizona you have no excuse absolutely the electorate doesn't want absolutely. you to, at the very least joe manchin can say oh i'm in a red state that we otherwise wouldn't have if i didn't win it so uh-huh. i gotta be a little conservative i disagree but it's like, like okay fine. whatever it's like you won your seat fucking govern but like, but kirsten cinema you're in a blue like a comfortably blue state you have no absurd, excuse absurd. to act like this and let's 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 not let this obfuscate what the real race is here the, the real race here is the oil industry versus the pharmaceutical That's industry. That's true. Both of the people who had their hands all over any decision that these guys made this year. Yeah, and, and we've been saying, you know, Joe Manchin is just a barrel of oil, a barrel of coal. Absolutely. And Kirsten Cinema is just an insurance plan. <laughs> like that's what, that's how they vote. I've been saying this. That that's who they are uh, and we I don't think we can ignore that. So, I don't know. Take Let's your pick. Let's see what the community said. Community said the winner. Oh, let me let me let me Oh, the winner yeah. For most important Democrat 2022. Kirsten Cinema. Let's go. By about ten percent of the Joe Manchin. I, I can't be mad. At it. Although I wanted Joe Manchin, I can't be mad at it. Yeah, look, I, I can't be mad at that outcome. You, you've made a great point. You've made a great argument. Here. <laughs> Kirsten Cinema, she takes it that time, but it was a close race between her and Joe Manchin, and um, 
I mean, just congratulations to all the nominees. Absolutely. Be better absolutely. is all I'm going to say. Please, please. Yeah, Joe Manchin and Kamala Harris didn't really even register on the votes here. Nancy Pelosi got some votes, but not many. And then uh, Kirsten Sinema took it's understandable. it. Understandable. Like the when, when I think of Nancy Pelosi, when I think of 2022 and Nancy Pelosi, really the only thing that comes pops into my mind is her flying to Taiwan. That's exactly out of what nowhere. I was thinking. Her flying to yeah, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> is her trip to Taiwan literally only for the reason of escalating just, tensions, just for shits and giggles? <laughs> yeah. So that that was a good one. That yeah. was a good. Uh, that was a highlight of this year. I would have accepted Joe Biden as an answer simply for the railroad stuff. Oh, because yeah. that was like extraordinarily bad. That's bad. Like direct implications, b- horrible implications for just hundreds of thousands of workers. I am a pro labor president. Yeah, but I I understand going with Kirsten Cinema, and Kirsten Cinema by far was the most nominated for for that award. Understood. Right and Kamala so. Harris absolutely kind of faded into obscurity this year. Yeah. The only thing I remember her doing is the wheels on the bus. You see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was yeah. unhinged. And then the laugh. That shit was crazy. I was this year. Do not come. Uh no, that was that was twenty twenty one. That was sure. that must have been the end of twenty twenty one then. Do not come, yeah. Damn, yeah. so it's like I feel like she really faded into obscurity. The only people talking about Kamala Harris are like conservatives who don't know what else to talk about and they're yeah. both racist and misogynistic and just want to talk about how she's Oh, and a she woman. ticks both boxes for them. Absolutely. Black woman scary, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh our next category though, to uh, to be the the yin to the Democrats yang. Most oh, abhorrent Republican of twenty twenty two. Very apt. <sighs> and our nominees are Marjorie Taylor Green. Ted, Ted Cruz, Cruz, Ron DeSantis, Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump. Those are our five. That's a tough race. And that is a that's a tough race. But in my mind, I think there's a clear winner. Absolutely, absolutely. I would argue that this is a uh, this is a more even playing field than the Democrats, though. Yeah, the it, Democrats oh, for sure. like I knew Joe Biden or Kamala Harris wasn't going to take it. I pretty much knew Nancy Pelosi wasn't going to take it. We mm-hmm. we had two people in the headlines this whole time. Mm-hmm. But with this race, like Mitch McConnell, although he's not in the headlines too much awful human being oh yeah i mean one of the reasons that we don't get anything done Mitch exactly. McConnell, 13 percent approval rating exactly bad guy mm-hmm. waste of space trash but i think he gets he gets away with a lot of stuff you know what i mean for sure like he gets away without people blaming him a lot of the time we focus so much on joe manchin and kirsten cinema and deservedly so right you're you're mm-hmm. part of the democratic party or were at one point <laughs> um and you should be voting alongside the party or voting in favor of things that you know the party is advocating for the president's advocating for uh, but with them we don't really blame them even though it is 50 republicans voting against that's it true. and mitch mcconnell in the senate is the one who should be able to round those He's ones the one up that's leading them yeah leading them into all this obstruction but Beyond that, you know, and Ted Cruz, obviously very awful. He's a shoe in all every single year. Should oh, be. for sure. Bad person. Uh, the worst. Famously, I always joke I'm anti death penalty. You all know that, except for except for the uh, the two instances, Hitler <laughs> and Ted Cruz. Yeah, we can make an exception. I can Morally, make an exception I can for carve Ted that Cruz. out in my yeah, in my moral code. <laughs> now, Ted Cruz, of course, a shoe in, but I don't I don't think he can match. Ron DeSantis. Absolutely not. Ron DeSantis has got to be the clear winner. In, in my mind, to. in my mind, I don't think any of them can compete with how awful Ron DeSantis was. And we'll get into this a little bit once we get to, you know, worst state of 2022. Uh-huh. I don't want to overshadow that category. And don't want to spoil any other races. Exactly. But, I mean, Ron DeSantis, you know, Martha's Vineyard, all uh, the legislation that was anti-trans. Don't say gay. Stop woke. Exa- yeah, like him coming out against, like, a private company for disagreeing with him. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a big fan of capitalism and all, but, like, that was crazy even to me like i'm not i'm not a big fan of how disney has like a special self-governing status Mm -hmm. and has these like special statuses within the florida government yeah because of capitalism however i can acknowledge that it's kind of weird that the only reason ron DeSantis has an issue with this Mm -hmm. is not for some principled not no. not anything principled. Not anything like oh, it's kind of dystopian that a corporation can like has has governing statuses. Isn't this kind of like company towns? Yeah, it's, it's nothing just, principled. Well, it's just you you are for trans people. Yeah, I mean he's he's disagreeing with a corporation, a business for the crime of disagreeing with him. It's a little fashy, and, you know? it, it's, a little and it's also fashy. the fact that I recognize that uh, like Disney having their special self governing status is good within the system that we have for yeah yeah because um one of the big one of the a lot of people coming out against ronda santa's move to dissolve their governing mm-hmm. status by 2023 are saying that this is absolutely going to fuck the taxes in the counties surrounding them mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. the way that disney has it right now is they can do their own road maintenance mm-hmm. and it's very important because disney world is fucking huge right yeah. Yeah. it's big it's there's a lot of infrastructure internal infrastructure that needs to be working like a yep. well-oiled machine mm-hmm. to get them to run to get all the people moving through the park to get everything going and running smoothly and if you were to turn that over to a regular like government bureaucracy that isn't mm-hmm. driven by the profit motive what count, you know what isn't I mean? it in like what, I don't, whatever county it's was about to surrounding get like orange county orange okay. county would be fucked a couple other counties would be fucked because their taxes would go through the roof yeah 
through the roof. And it's like, you can make a really, I think I would probably make the argument that having any corporation control like that big of a geographic area with government power is probably yeah, bad. Absolutely. But there is an argument to be made that it's like, yeah, it's going to fuck people over and you're only doing it. Not because you think this is unjust uh -huh. as like an axiomatic belief, but because a private company spoke out against you. Yeah. Uh, what about free speech, Ron? Come what on. About, what about free speech? Come on now. Um, but the other person I think you can make a good argument for, of course, is Marjorie Taylor Greene. For sure. I don't think she can beat Ron DeSantis, no. at least in my mind. No. Uh, I, don't, I don't think she beats Ron DeSantis, given just how bad Ron DeSantis this was. This is the year she showed up at the Nick Fuentes event, correct? It, I think so. It's the year that she was in the jail cell like thing. Oh, that was so the, fun. Um, that was at CPAC, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, at CPAC, yeah. She got she got in a jail cell, or she had like some dude act like he was in a jail cell because he was. January 6th, -er, yep. The January 6th. -er. I think he was a January 6th, -er, but he got out. Yes. Yeah. I th yeah. He served like two months or something. We we covered it at the beginning of the year. That yeah. was so funny. Actually, I love that. That was video. a good time. I love that video so much. That, that, that he's was sitting there one. and he like fake cries, doesn't he? Well, like all these like. If there was a if there's a category for most unhinged like photo op, it would be that's got to be it. It'd be Nancy Pelosi standing next to uh, Zelensky. That one was weird. <laughs> it sure. would, and then Marjorie Taylor Greene would be in there like kneeling with the uh, the dude in like the costume, looking like he's about to cry. Oh yeah, because he's yeah. like sitting in the chair, like dogs out too. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. You, <laughs> for what reason? You did not need to do that. Like you have the whole prisoner guard. You got the orange jumpsuit. You're in a cage in the middle of CPAC. I think prisoners wear shoes. Dog. Yeah, yeah, like you could put shoes. Out. Even if they don't, like you don't need to do that. He did not <laughs> need to have the dogs out. He could have had socks on at the very least. Not that I'm complaining. In. All right. However, and then she gets down and she like cries with him, oh, yeah. he? and she says a prayer. And she, yeah, she did a prayer. And weren't they singing like the national anthem? I think so. Her, I do like remember. I don't, I don't think it was necessarily this year, but it's the clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene giving some speech about the January Sixers, and she says, "Yeah, these are real American patriots held in the most abhorrent conditions in these de <laughs> these awful DC prisons." That. And it's like, "Yeah, they they are awful. We should do something about that, but not for this reason." And they get up and uh -huh. they're patriots who sing the national anthem every night. Oh, gosh. I can't remember when we covered that. If that was this year or last year. I can't remember either. But, yeah, she stumbled upon, like, uh, the prison industrial complex by yeah, accident. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you did the wrong equation but got the right answer. Yeah, but only for the January 6th. There's yes. Only for the D.C. prison. Yeah, only everywhere for the else, guys. Everywhere else is probably fine. Uh, we ready for to reveal the winner, though? I think so. I think so. However, I would, I would say that it, it feels weird not having Donald Trump necessarily be a front runner for this. Yeah. However, it's like... He didn't fade into obscurity, obviously, one of the biggest figures in just America in mm -hmm. general. But he has no power and didn't really do much. Yeah. A lot of the stories surrounding Trump were honestly stories about him doing illegal things. Yeah, I, I think it was a lot of the things around Trump. It was either him doing illegal things or things happening to him that people as, reacted to. Yeah, as a result of him doing illegal things. Yeah, usually. And I think that this is just evidence of one, deplatforming works to some extent yeah. for Donald Trump. And two, taking him out of power took away his ability to do anything bad. I mean, you notice that the people that we said are at the top are people that have like political power. Oh, and, and are actively using and, and are actively power. Use, yeah, like Ron DeSantis and Marjorie Taylor Greene are. So um, yeah, it, it's weird to not see Donald Trump up at the top. Absolutely. And I, I don't think he deserves to be up at the top this no, year. No, he does not. No, maybe, he does not. Maybe in a 2020 political environment, Trump is the worst of the year uh you know maybe like a 2019 maybe, even maybe 2023 or maybe. 2024 political environment yeah maybe maybe once we hit oh in two years from now once we're yeah. out here covering the 2024 presidential race donald trump's up there he could be yeah, i just i can't think of someone who had more just material harm that they put into the world other than yeah. ron DeSantis. i can't think of somebody Absolutely. ron DeSantis on the republican number side, least, one pick should we get this drum roll uh, we got rolling it. We got it. the go. most important republican 2022 is Ron DeSantis. Unsurprisingly. Congratulations. Unsurprisingly. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Congratulations, Ron. Ron. Congratulations, Ron. Uh, we hate you so much, and we, we wish you'd go away. Exactly. I wish you'd uh, resign from office. Um, That's right. Uh, shout out to all the winners so far. Uh, hopefully you don't win again next year. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, now I think it's time to move on to, you know, maybe if, if the other categories were not so clear cut, I think this one might be clear cut. Absolutely, these it's worst this, state. This category and the last category are kind of married. Yeah, in they some are. Way, they are. Know? We we've got worst state of 2022. That's the next category. Our nominees are Florida, Ohio, Texas, Arizona, and Oklahoma. 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 That was my choice. Uh, huh. I, I put Oklahoma in there because they pledged to be, or, or their governor Kevin Stitt pledged them to be the most pro life state in the union. True. And I think they're succeeding. Um, but that, that's Absolutely. really the extent of it. We needed a fifth one, so I put him in there. Okay, uh, I under, understood, there. understood. I, I appreciate the consistency. You know, we yeah. got to make the award show run smoothly. Yeah, we, we do got to make it run smoothly. And in my mind, there's only two competitors in this one. There's really only two competitors. Really only two competitors. I'd, I'd have to agree. You, you see, like, Arizona, 
yeah, you've got Kirsten Cinema. You've got election like, deniers, yeah, election deniers. A couple other things. You you had the people uh, that LARPed to have guns and open carry at ballot boxes doing that's voter true. intimidation. That's true. But I don't think that that's enough. We that's that not 18, enough to get you to the worst state. <laughs> that what, like 1860s law that was going to totally ban abortion Yeah, that uh, would have gone back into effect, but I don't think it did. Like we also had that in Michigan. Yeah, exactly. We also had that in like Michigan. Get your, get your own fucking flow. That's you know not enough. Saying? That's not enough to make you the worst state of 2022. Oklahoma, we talk most pro-life state, that's bad. That, that's really bad. That's very bad, but again, that's unfortunately not enough. Uh-huh. And they're crazy <laughs> two contenders so that leaves Ohio as like a clear third. Yeah. See, to me, Ohio is like the meme pick. Down in Ohio swag like Ohio. Yeah, and I think that's why Ohio, Ohio was nominated. Ohio being pretty shitty, but Ohio also did have some pretty bad stuff this year. Um Ohio had the 10-year-old, mm-hmm. didn't they? Oh, Ohio had yes. the, yeah, 10-year-old the 10-year-old that, that couldn't, get, couldn't get an abortion. Had to go to Indiana. Very clearly very awful, uh-huh. right? Ohio had JD Vance. That is true. Bad. Ohio had JD Vance, and Ohio is is Ohio. You know what it's, I mean? Uh, it's Ohio. It smells like sulfur when you drive through it. The election for Ohio really bad, for, uh-huh. at least for you know people that like are not absolutely horrible. Because uh, again, JD Vance won, and then they had a Republican governor win, and just overall not great. Yeah. So, but Ohio's pretty bad. But in my mind, there's only two competitors. Only two. It's got to be Texas versus Florida. Those 100%, are the top two. Percent. One hundred percent. Texas versus Florida. And you know, maybe if we were in 2021 and we had that power outage that went statewide in Texas, maybe then we could give maybe it to it'd Texas. Be closer. Maybe it'd be a closer race. But it's got to be Florida. One hundred percent. Florida. Just, it, it has to be Florida. Given all of the bad legislation that passed, the Stop Woke Act, the Don't Say Gay Act, and everything else, uh, Ron DeSantis pretending that it's like a border state and yeah. somehow like advocating for harsher immigration policies just all of the things that florida did this year with abortion etc all of it just to me i i can't even comprehend how awful that is i I would argue i would argue texas texas has some peaks oh yeah texas has some higher highs than florida does Mm -hmm. but florida throughout the year has just been consistently awful every three months there's either just some new big event or some new piece of legislation that is just absolutely abhorrent yeah right yeah and to, to to argue for Texas here, to play devil's advocate for Texas, they they did have they did have tragedy at the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. and that they weren't able to do anything about. Mm-hmm. That's that's definitely going to get you on the worst state of twenty twenty two if you cannot pass gun reform after an that's elementary true. school school shooting. Yeah, it's fucking insane. Y- Uvalde right? does boost Texas in this case. It is. Yes, it is. It's exactly really helping Texas. Texas out in this category. In this category, in the worst way. worst state of twenty twenty two. Um, you you have still Greg Abbott, uh, Greg Abbott, a couple like a month ago, declaring not a state of emergency, but uh, invoking the invasion clause of the Constitution yes, yes. to help uh, do something against immigrants. Yeah, you had you had uh, Greg Abbott on that topic of immigration, uh, slowing down the immigration procedures just to fuck over the economy. Oh yeah, like absolutely. just for the purpose of one being racist and keeping you know people of color out. From yeah, the southern border, and it didn't even like do any of that. Over the economy, yeah, it didn't even help anything. Yeah. All it did was lose billions of dollars yeah. to the American economy. We're for. already struggling in a yeah. recession. Yeah, and Texas also, of course, had Beto O'Rourke. I mean, that's pretty <laughs> bad. <laughs> Beto O'Rourke is our only hope in Texas. Ugh. Not, not on the magnitude of like, um, I don't know, not on the magnitude of like you know Ron DeSantis being in Florida or anything like that. And he's, I, I think he's worse than Stacey Abrams in my mind. Yeah, you know, Stacey Abrams keeps trying, but like at least. At least She's Stacey, got some good things going. I was going to say, at least I can like like Stacey Abrams. The worst thing Stacey Abrams really does is make really corny, awful mm-hmm, ads mm-hmm. and kind of campaign awfully. But at least she's like, okay, she Bet- drags some Democrats across the finish line that aren't exactly. herself. But. Exactly, and she is like, okay, Beto O'Rourke lost to Ted Cruz, mm-hmm. and then he lost to Greg Abbott. Mm-hmm. Beto O'Rourke is the John Jones of the Democratic Party. It's not good, and it's like he's fine. Obviously, he's not a demon like John Jones, but like John for, James, yeah, John James. So sorry. Yeah. Uh, fam- Michigan now representative. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he finally made it after yeah. losing four races. So maybe there is hope for Beto. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. there's hope for Beto in 2024. Yeah. But, but he already was a House of Representatives member. Oh, he's point. the reverse John James. He's the reverse John James. <laughs> so I don't think he's ever going to get anything Fuck. ever again. So, Fuck. yeah, I, th- that could put Texas over the finish line. But in my mind, it's got to be Florida. 100%. It's got to be Florida. The, the, I, the, the, there's, not, there's not the notable le- legislation that yeah. came out of Florida. Yeah. There's more the notable personalities and still the personality does not match Ron DeSantis and the Can't. awful things that he is and the awful things that he stands for. Yeah, and just like the implications for the future. Uh-huh. Bad. Uh, exactly, like, with bad. him being the the like pretty much the front runner for it, the GOP uh, outside of like Trump running. And with Florida being like the new Republican model for how to win certain states, right? Uh-huh. Cuz Florida did Florida was the best 
state for the Republicans in the 2020 midterms or 2022 midterms. After coming off being like somewhat of a battleground state historically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Because Obama won Florida at one point. Florida was, you know, back and forth. Uh, Ron DeSantis, his governor race was very, very close back in 2018. So Florida has been a battleground state. But for Republicans to win it so big and for Ron DeSantis to get such a big, I don't know, mandate from the Republican Party, it is going to to have implications for years to come. And that's bad implications. Bad implications. Very bad. Remember, these are the worst worst things of yeah. 2022 so uh I, in my mind that gives it to florida it's, it's so to. funny because if we were conservative commentators everything would just be flipped yeah yeah <laughs> they, that's how i know it would be super easy to do that i could just lie uh, no for sure for yeah. sure uh are we ready for our winner though ready to announce we are, we are absolutely ready for the winner here the winner of worst state of 2022 is florida let's go it's the state of florida Almost, I'm almost. I'm, I've got a good rate with my picks here. Yeah, congratulations to Florida. Um, I hope you all drift into the sea. Oh my God, uh, can't lie. I'm <laughs> sorry your house and move. Florida. Yeah, sell, sell your, your house, house and, and move. move. Uh, now moving on to maybe maybe a closer category, but maybe not because okay. I, I might have cheated on the answers a little bit here. Oh, all Worst right, all overall right. person of 2022, and our contenders are Kanye West, Marjorie okay. Taylor Greene, Elon Musk, Clarence Thomas, and Samuel Alito combined. And All the right. last one is Ron DeSantis. Now, you could call a flag on the play. I, w- I would respect it if you called a flag down that force. I, 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 w- I would answer. understand if you said, hey, this is a little bullshit, Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito. But the, the reason why we included both of them in one answer is because we got a lot for Clarence Thomas and a lot for Samuel Alito. And it felt unfair to choose only one of them since both of them contributed to the Dobbs decision and also all the other bad decisions to come out. And both of them published just absolutely awful opinions and yeah. came out and said awful things. But it's like, you, I, don't, I feel like... I feel like you can't split the court like that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you can't split it. It, it, it felt um, unjust to put any one of them on their own. So we had to combine both of them. And in my mind, for worst person of 2022, my gut reaction wants to say a Kanye West or Elon Musk, right? Just because we yeah. talked about them so much. Yeah. Just because they were so annoying and we were always, you know, on about how they were wrong about X, Y, and Z, especially Kanye West and, you mm-hmm. know, the the latter <laughs> quarter of the, of the year. <laughs> Um, but like just in terms of most damage done, it's got to go to the duo. That's it's what go I'm the saying. Duo. I'm, I'm exactly, I am right there with you. Cause like Elon Musk, right. As much as we shit on him, uh, as much as we make fun of him as awful and annoying yeah. as he is, mm. did he cause systemic harm? Yeah. He bought well, Twitter. overseas, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he, does he have children in the Congo mining for cobalt? Yeah. Yeah. You know, does he does he have like slave labor happening in Bolivia? Yeah. He yeah. does. He it's does. Bad, and that's bad. And that puts him above Kanye for me. But if we're talking about like the the systemic suspension of rights uh, and the slow destruction of democratic norms, I mean, Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito, no one does it better than them. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No one does it better than them. And no one can come out, do that, drop like an essay on why it's good that they're doing bad things, uh-huh. and then just kind of fade out into obscurity again. Yeah, and then not be talked about anymore. Then take a break. Exactly. And then go on a vacation. Like, hey, asshole, I don't take breaks. Exactly. Week by week, we're recording Every podcasts. Every single week for 77 uh-huh. weeks, we've been in the studio. I guarantee that we have dropped more pages in show notes in content than yeah. they have in opinions. Yeah. Like, what do they do? And we don't get paid the buku bucks like they do. Oh, God, they get paid like $200,000 a year. Something crazy. In a lifetime appointment? Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this forever. It depends on all the all the sweet <laughs> patrons. And now as we go to our quick commercial break yeah, exactly. to, yeah. to advertise the Head and the Elvis Patreon, do you want to hear the episodes early? Are, yeah. are you sick of hearing episodes just on Wednesdays? Do you want to hear episodes as they drop? Oh, yeah. Are you sick of – are you just tired and frustrated with getting the news – Three days after, you know, potentially it breaks, maybe longer after it breaks, exactly. and hearing us in the next episode say, like, oh, we were late to the news, I bet you're tired of it. Are, are you you're just immensely frustrated by clicking onto your favorite podcast every mm-hmm. Wednesday at noon, and then waiting to hear them comment on the biggest thing that happened this mm-hmm. past week, because mm-hmm. you listen Wednesday to Wednesday, yeah, and then they don't get to it because they record Sunday to Sunday? Exactly. Well, let me tell you, folks. Are you sick? Uh, one more thing. One more thing. Are, are you sick and tired of only having one episode of Head in the Office? Do you oh wish that God. there could be multiple? Maybe there could, but it's up to you. There could. There could. Eventually, if if we get more, then there could. And, you know, I've got the solution for you. Why don't you head over to Head in the Office, mm-hmm. Patreon.com. Excuse me. One of Patreon.com. Our, one of our gracious sponsors of this award show. Head in the Office pod. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe get yourself a subscription. 
They made this award show possible. Um, the patrons over at Head in the Office for exactly. Head in the Office. Our financial backers, our angel investors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, the dividends aren't getting back to you yet, but they they will in laughter. Exactly. We, we, we don't pay dividends in money over here. That's right. We, we pay dividends in, in entertainment and laughter. Smiles, happiness. Uh, happiness joy. that you're up with the current news cycle. Uh-huh. We we pay dividends in um in one hour of feeling like things suck, but you know, kind of enjoying it a little bit. Exactly. Ironically, you know exactly. what I mean. Hour hour and a half most weeks, uh, mm-hmm. things like that. Award show every year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, go check it out. Go check it out. Uh, that concludes this. Uh, this message is uh, sponsored by not sponsored sponsored. By, this message Brought is approved you, yeah. <laughs> by uh, both that and the office hitto boys. That's right. That's right. Oh, welcome back. Welcome to the award back show, to everybody. the award show. What an exciting commercial that we just had right there. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us through the commercial break. <laughs> now it's time to uh, reveal the winner of worst overall person in twenty twenty two. Exactly. Are you ready? I bet you were just sitting there clenching your seat uh-huh. Uh-huh. while that commercial was going. And I hope you got some useful information out of it. I hope you maybe check out the Patreon. But uh, here we go. Drum roll, please. The winner is for overall worst person, or should I say people? Oh, Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Worst people, 2022. Oh my goodness! And this this offers a, a brilliant segue into our next category: person most likely to ruin 2023. That's right. Because I think there's a clear third run here. Mm-hmm. I I think there is. I I honestly do. I think that those same people might be the most likely to ruin the next year. Mm-hmm. That, no, I think so too. You want to read off the nominees? I you do want to read off the nominees for person most likely to ruin 2023 here at the Hitter Awards 2022. We have Elon Musk, Ron DeSantis, mm-hmm. Kanye West, the entire Supreme Court of the United States. And Kirsten Cinema. So again, like the last one, you could call a flag. You, you could, could call say a this flag. is a fair competition. Um, but the thing here is like, you know, we don't deal in fairness. Exactly. We don't I, exist I, in a fair I system. Don't, I don't care about fairness. <laughs> I, I don't care about fairness. I don't care about equity. I don't care about any of I that. I am the ultimate arbiter of this show. This isn't a democracy. You know, I own this. <laughs> literally. We literally own the podcast and everything that's involved with it. So again, yeah, you know, I don't even know. I don't even know that an argument could be made. And in it's this also case. it's also the argument for treating them as one person. They're they're one body. You don't you don't really see Clarence Thomas going out and acting on his own mm-hmm. and doing bad things on his own. That's right. You don't see Samuel Alito and Brett well, you see Brett Kavanaugh doing bad things on his own. <laughs> yeah, t- yeah, yeah, yeah. You see him doing a lot of bad things on his own, but the Supreme Court acts hey, as alleged a body. bad things. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we're talking about every Supreme Court decision and argument in case that's about to come up, uh, I mean, I just I think it's got to win it, with at the very least uh, Moore v. Harper and what's the other one? Moore v. Harper. There are two affirmative the, action cases. Two and affirmative the, action the cases. Gay wedding. The gay thing. wedding website. The gay yeah. wedding website. The one that might say like, if they don't want to serve gay people, they don't have to, and you can't legislate anything. The, the one that if if the the plaintiffs win, they they would fundamentally alter how the Constitution is interpreted in mm-hmm. saying that religious freedom freedom trumps freedom of expression yes yes so that's fun yeah um so i mean and you know you could make the argument it's like well some of those won't have implications until 2024 so could you really call them most likely to ruin 2023 yes Uh, and i would say yeah because it's going to ruin my mood exactly i'm going to be sad about it the vibes will be off you didn't read the small print but it's most likely to ruin my 2023 (laughs) (laughs) all i'm saying is if those decisions (laughs) drop if more v harper drops and democracy is in shambles in 2024 uh-huh. the vibes are going to be off for the rest of the year and it's going to be because of people that ruined it in 2023 exactly they dropped the decision in 2023 and so i my take my pick has got to be supreme court it's got to be my pick court. is also with the supreme court so, what, uh, what what is the pick what did the community decide winner for person most likely to ruin 2023 it's the supreme court you're in line with us let's go let's go congratulations that's a good one. That's a great pick, everybody. Uh, and now we're on to our final community pick category. Final community pick? And picks. that's the best episode I had in the office. So I've been waiting for this one. I've been waiting I've for this one, too. I've been waiting. I've been wondering. I've you been know, watching. And I will say, looking at the nominations, we've been we've had a uh, a diversity of, of picks for for episodes. A lot of people had different oh, favorite episodes, absolutely. some more recent, some more old. And I was, um, I was really interested to see which ones you guys liked. But five stood out. Five okay. stood out. Okay. And that is Hard for Crime, episode 69. That's a good title. Nice. Uh, Yadolf wears Yeezys, which awesome. is very recent. Fantastic. Two weeks title. ago. Uh, Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss Fascism. All right. Uh, we got Abort the Court, episode 51. Ooh. And C- The Cruelty is the Point, episode 63. So some of those more recent, some of those from earlier in the year. It's a close race for me. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it was a close race for everyone, really. I mean, the, the pie is pretty split. Huh. Um, I, got I, the I w- winner just edging out everybody else, right? Yeah, well, just just barely. Just like how you're edging me with these results. Come uh, on. I am. I, I mean, it's just like I, there's just. 
I, I couldn't choose. If I'm being honest, I think any of these are up for grabs. I would say that all of our content's literally perfect. Yeah, I would um, say I've never done anything wrong ever. <laughs> I've never had a bad take. Everything I say is absolutely on purpose. I am the moral standard. If you look at if you look at something I say and you're like, well, well, evidence suggests otherwise, then your evidence must be wrong somehow. Yeah. <laughs> the only <laughs> evidence get that better matters. evidence. I mean, like, I'm a big fan of um, solipsism. You know, uh, uh-huh. I am the only thing that exists. <laughs> I am a brain in a vat. <laughs> exactly. The <laughs> You're universe all is just, exist yeah. in here. So I think it's time to let's get to the answer. Let's uh, say I would say before we get to the answer, okay. I'd say my personal picks would be between hard for crime uh-huh. and abort the court. Yeah, uh, I would. I would think so too. I think I think those are the, the two two of the best ones up there. And uh, if you want to roll the drums, I will roll. I got quite the, the answer. Dr- for I'm you. sorry. I'm sorry. Drum roller, please, please. Winner for best episode of Head in the Office is a tie. Oh no! Between hard for crime and abort the court. Let's go. Let's <laughs> let's go. I swear I did not look at these results before we go. Thank you, audience. Thank I you, think thank you. I think you missed only one, and that would have been the the Joe Manchin Kirsten Cinema one. I think that's the only one. Oh, Unless you joined my side towards goodness. the end, there. then you could say I, you I went. I, you, you made a great argument, 10, I but I still thought Joe Manchin was going to get through. Yeah, I mean, I, nine I, for ten. That's a ninety percent. That's a solid A minus. Look, congratulations to all of our nominees. I'm so glad you all could make it out. Thank you for everyone in the audience that's here celebrating with us. Exactly. Of course, we're not done just yet. Oh no! I have one more section no, no, no. planned for you all, but before we get there, I want to go through some honorable mentions of news stories that <laughs> didn't get nominated for anything, but still deserve to be recognized. In the Absolutely, list. news stories that were far and away so, some of the best this year. And you know, I'm probably missing some of these on here. There was tons of culture war issues that we talked about that may not be in this list, but you all can can fill us in in the comments for section sure. and let us know for anything sure. we're missing. First one I got on here, one that stood out to me is something that we we covered but didn't talk about too much was Shinzo Abe's assassination. Absolutely, that shit was crazy that shit was absolutely crazy and to to and echo Japan. to echo the sentiments of a podcast that has way more listeners than us uh when, when i think felix said on chop trap house that you know in japan they don't have any guns so when you get one you got to use it right mm-hmm. that's that that summarizes the story here yeah i think that's the best take on the situation that is the best take that you, is you, re- you got to make it count yeah, you, exactly. When you get a gun, you have to make it count in Japan. You got to do something you really want to do. And boy, did he. And boy, did he. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, another honorable mention, though, is, of course, the blockage of the Suez Canal. That caused a whole that lot of problems. Uh, yeah, that was this year. Oh, when my When it was sitting, uh, the, the boat that, turned in the middle. It starts, yeah. And it was just blocking billions of dollars every day. Like every hour, yeah, right? That was cool. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. For those that don't know, of course, the Suez Canal is a, is a key part of the supply chain, and it was blocked by a big boat. Without the Suez Canal, you would have to go all the way around Africa mm-hmm. to get here, Something right? like that. Something yeah. like that. So uh, not great. Of course, we had the new Mussolini in, uh, God, what's her name? Georgia Maloney jo- in yes, Italy. in Italy. The uh, literal fascist. An actual fascist that conservatives came out to bat for. And then, of course, they made the argument that, oh, well, Mussolini was a socialist. So if she was actually the new Mussolini, despite saying that she loves Mussolini, then, well, she must be, you guys mu- should yeah, like you her. you guys must like standards. her, honestly. Come on now, it's an idiot. Uh, we got protests in Iran that we covered. Uh, yes. It's still going pretty bad. Uh, nothing good out of that. Yeah. Uh, Black Little Mermaid. Oh, I loved that news story. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good cold open we got out of that one. Too. Yeah. Matt Walsh saying like, uh, well, that's just not scientifically possible. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense for there to be melanin down there. I'm sorry. Speaking of Matt Walsh, though, the What is a Woman documentary. That was a good one. Oh. <sighs> True. We never watched that though. No, we never watched we it. We might have to get a hit on movie night together. I'm thinking of doing a, a hit on movie night through our Discord, either on what is a woman or maybe something more fun. The Hunter My Biden. son Hunter. Yes. My son we Hunter. We were talking about that on the live stream that we did earlier, uh-huh. which is another h- absolute highlight of the year. Oh, for special, sure. Special, special shout out to everybody who showed up to that live stream and knows Amen. what we're talking about right Certified now. Certified Iowa corner store moment. That's, That's all right. I'm going to say. Those that were there know. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> if you get it, um, you get it. Something that stood out to me was Tulsi Gabbard leaving the Democratic Party. That was a good one. Uh, uh, she, that was cool. she announced that she was leaving the Democrats and immediately just started hitting all the culture war issues on Twitter mm-hmm. and tweeting like she, she'd she been thinking these things for a long time. Yeah. Oh, no. She had the takes formulated. Uh-huh. Like that was that's me after I've thought about what I'm going to say on the pod since like Tuesday. You know no, what that's me after I've been doing show notes, like thinking about show notes all week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, we, of course, had the uh, kitty litter box in the schools controversy. That's gas. That Apparently, turned out to just be a lie. There's like a lady that dressed up as a cat and went on Tucker Carlson to like advocate against that stuff. Dog, what? <laughs> like, uh, like a furry costume? No, 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 not like a furry costume. But she put on like a leopard print, put on like cat ears, and went on Tucker Carlson. Was it like Halloween or something? No, she just, she just, she did, just that. did that for the stunt. Like American politics is literally a circus. Oh, no, like it's actually that's crazy because it turned out that the kitty the kitty litter box story was completely falsified. 
the only thing that was real is that there was kitty litter in uh, classrooms and whatever the school was, uh -huh. but not for kids that identify as furries to take a shit, <laughs> but for kids to use in case there's a school shooter and they can't make it to the bathrooms. Damn. That was why there was cat litter. Damn. Uh, because of an American problem that we refuse to solve <laughs> that is the fault of Republicans and conservative commentators, of course. That's a good one. Uh, the next one that we never talked about on the show was the SpaghettiOs on the Van Gogh painting. True. Pretty gas story. That was a highlight. Mm -hmm. That was a good highlight. Of course, we got the metaverse and everything that happened with that this year. The metaverse really popped off and then failed yeah, this met year. Metaverse really, <laughs> they, they peaked. Let me yeah. tell you, boy, did they peak. And then they lost uh, Zuck, I think like $9 billion or something yeah. like that. Pretty cool. Uh, God, metaverse is an ally. Come down was harder than like MDMA. Yeah, it's welcome, nuts. welcome to the revolution, metaverse, uh, comrade, metaverse. Yeah, uh, and then we have uh, this is one that I just remember seeing in the headlines: the dude lighting himself on fire in front of SCOTUS to protest climate change. Classic self immolation. Yeah, some that just did not get covered. Yeah, no, which is crazy. A dude just straight up lit himself on fire. I think in front we of the talked court. about it. We did. I think we talked about it a little bit. But something that didn't really get like it was just a blip in the radar of the Newsweek. Uh huh. Uh, and I mean, I feel like that's something pretty significant. Camp, absolutely absolutely it used to be something significant self-immolating yourself used to mean something i've been saying this. it used to get you on the cover of a rage against the machine album when you protest the vietnam war that's right like you should now this next section is something a little special okay something this i've been section, cooking i got up. nothing about this there's, there's no i, I didn't, I didn't put me. anything in the show notes this is done for me this is entirely in my my private files if you will wonderful and I, i'm very excited for this so to close off the show unless you have something afterwards but to, to close off my bit my my contribution a quick to the bit show, quick bit you know i'm a fan uh, of the bit is uh we're gonna do a bracket Oh, we've, we've got a bracket style, uh, like a game. March Madness style, yes, like a oh, March Madness style, wonderful. and we've got we, we've got sixteen different news stories here from different <gasps> news cycles, and I want you. We're gonna together narrow down the most putrid news cycle of 2022. Okay. Now, these aren't just headlines. These aren't just national news story one-time things. These are news cycles, things that cycles. repeatedly came up, things that repeatedly maybe still are brought up today. All right. And we're going to whittle it down until we get the absolute most putrid news cycle of 2022. If anybody wants to follow along at home, feel free. Mm -hmm. Bust out a 16-spot 16, 16 bracket. Exactly. Let's, let's, let's get it going. You ready for our first matchup? I'm ready. I'm ready. We've got the FBI raid versus the Herschel Walker abortion scandal. Those two news cycles, which one would you think is the most putrid? Uh, you you got to weigh the response. You got to weigh the actual happenings of what happened there. You got to weigh, you know, what conservatives are still saying to this day. This is tough. It is tough. Personally. It is, it's going to get a lot harder. Oh, <laughs> for, man. For we're, we're already starting. Because personally, I think the Herschel Walker abortion is way funnier. Yeah, funnier for sure. Way funnier. Got to be, right? Way crazier. But, like, Trump getting raided was nuts. Yeah, yeah. That was actually nuts. Conservatives are still railing about, like, the D Biden's DOJ being corrupt. That's true. That's so, that's where defund the FBI came if from. We're, if we're talking about putridity, if we're talking about scale, if we're talking about effect, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to say that that one's got more legs. It just does. It, it, it does. It does. Uh, I would happen to agree. I think the Herschel, Herschel Walker abortion scandal also brought Christian Walker into the fold. Yes. In terms of the news cycle. And that was funny. And I thought that was funny. And then we straight up had some Republicans just admitting like, oh, yeah, I don't care who Herschel Walker is as a person. I just want political control. Like, uh -huh. I'm glad you're just being honest. But, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe that puts Herschel Walker's story ahead. That's, I, that's, that's what I'm saying because it's so funny. And it's yeah. like, if I'm going to default to the hit or razor, the funniest outcome is the best outcome. That's true. Elon Musk stole that from us, by the way. Did you see that? <laughs> yes. That we said it like two weeks before he put it. He was like, yeah, Elon Musk posts on Twitter, the funniest outcome is the correct one. Elon's right. Fuck you, dog. It's, it's, I came up with Shut the fuck that. up, dog. He listens. He's got to yeah. listen. Yeah. He must have stole it from us when he he's listening listens. on our phones through the Twitter app. Yeah. Boost us on Twitter, dog. God damn. Anyway, what, what's your choice? I'll let you make the decision here. Man, man, if we're talking scale, if we're talking putridity, mm -hmm. I, I would because like, what is putridity? Exactly. Well, we, yeah. we have to ask ourselves here: <laughs> what is putridity? Oh no, we're gonna go down a rabbit hole of defining terms. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, I don't know. A big part of putridity is what's the funniest. That's a true. big part of putridity, insane, is unhinged, yeah, insane, unhinged. The 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 craziest outcome, but Trump being raided in his Mar-a-Lago home is insane. And part of me thinks that 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 is insane because it's just like the Hillary Clinton book we read over the yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah. Like beat for beat, it was just like that raid. Go check out Hiddle Book Club. No, it was one, like exactly the same <laughs> thing. That's crazy, by the way. Like she had to write that in advance with Louise Penny. Yeah, like that's nuts. Like she got it. She got yeah, it down pat. That did. book is something else. Go check out the Hiddle Book Club, please. Uh, get us to read more books. Anyway, God, this is tough. I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna have to pick the Trump raid. Trump raid, okay. I'm have to pick the Trump raid. That was uh, I thought you were gonna go with Herschel Walker. But I let thought me... I was gonna go with Herschel Walker too, but I feel like the Trump raid. It's just it's just there. It's just so out of pocket. That it was very out of pocket. I'm gonna move uh, the FBI Trump raid then onto round two. Wonderful. Let me paste him in here. For all, all right. you playing along at home. Yeah, we got it locked in. The next one, the next matchup, the Hunter Biden dick laptop story. <laughs> versus the conservative outrage around SCOTUS protests, prote- protesting in front of Brett Kavanaugh home oh, and all the other homes. Hunter Biden cock. Oh, just this immediately? Is, this is easy cock. Okay, all this right. Is, this is easy cock. Why the conservative that? outrage uh, of, about people protesting was, was kind of corny, and it was kind of short-lived. However, Hunter, Hunter Biden's cock yeah. has, has been long and hard throughout the year. <laughs> <laughs> like, nice. They have they have been talking about this all year and mm-hmm. all of last year. Hunter Biden's cock has staying power. That is and true. That's why I think that it moves on, and it's so funny. See, I, I put the SCOTUS protest outrage in here just because I, I thought it was funny how all year we've heard about First Amendment, right? Yeah, freedom of speech, First Amendment. Uh, you stop need to stop censoring us, and then the moment. People want to exercise their First Amendment rights for legitimate reasons because mm-hmm. they're mad about a SCOTUS decision, you know, something that our political I'm officials are mad about are doing. a SCOTUS decision that's directly affecting them. Uh, like as soon as they of. do that, they're like, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. Uh-huh. That was crazy. And then they, they pass a like crazy budget increase to like, uh-huh. get security for them and everything. But like, God, dude. Hunter Biden's cock just stay on my mind. You know what I'm saying? A movie came out of it that we gotta watch. Exactly. A movie came out of it. All right. Hunter Biden's dick moves on to the next round. Uh, The next matchup here is the wave of bookmans across the country versus Elon Musk buying Twitter and everything that ensued. Another tough one. That's that's another tough one. Another another tough one. Another mismatch. Because 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 what what what. What gets me, what pulls me t- in the tug of war of this matchup, what's pulling me towards <laughs> the side of the book bans uh-huh. is Davison School Board banning healing sexual trauma. Mm-hmm. Cause that is, that is, I feel like that is putrid. That yeah. is putrid in the purest sense of the word. But Elon Musk buying Twitter, God, there have been so many moments to come out of that one. For sure. Yeah. But if we're going to, if we're going to talk about systemic art, if we're going to talk about reach, uh, I want to say book bans. I, I okay. want to. I want to. But Elon Musk Twitter is so funny. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a case for both. I think the book bans, while they have two 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 components for the book banning, yeah. right? There's one actual harm that is being caused to children. Exactly. Not only in terms of like educational outcomes and having access to a wide range of literature, but also like people that need access to certain and if, sexual if, trauma. If things. you want to talk about grooming, they're unironically being groomed into straighthood. Yeah. When oh you, yeah. When you yeah, get yeah, rid yeah. of these things. Exactly. Like, exactly. Uh, and th- so there's that, and then with the book bannings, it's just like. It's just generally insane uh-huh. that they're taking away books, uh, not only because they're hurting children, but because, you know, this is what fascists do. And God, again, the books that they are taking. Like, I went into a bookstore with my girlfriend a couple, like, a couple weeks ago, and there was a banned book section. So I was like, oh, that's funny. Let me check this out. And, like, the fucking, uh, uh, the Lorax was on there. What the fuck? That was a big one from a couple of years ago. I remember when okay. the Lorax got banned at a couple of schools, but it's like. Or like Mouse? Mouse yeah, is banned? Yeah, Mouse getting banned. They just keep going, and they just keep getting further. They're, they're banning the books, uh, teaching you to not be a Nazi. Mm-hmm. They're banning the books that teach you how to deal with sexual trauma. Mm-hmm. They're banning the books that help you discover your self-identity. Uh-huh. Like, it's it's crazy. But the, the argument for Elon and Twitter, I mean, it's hard because, we, you know, we're Twitter heads. We're, I'm on Twitter we scroll, now. Yeah. But a lot of people don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it doesn't, it's only going to impact the people that are really involved in it. And once Twitter goes away, you know, if, if Elon Musk ever blows it up, it's not going to matter anymore. You know, we're going to make it. Uh, Twitter's gonna go on and not exist. We're not Twitter even didn't exist like before. It popping exist like crazy on Twitter. Exactly. Like some of some of our best content is on Twitter. I would say. <laughs> might I? Might I argue? If we're talking about arguing for Hiddo's best social media. Twitter's got to be up there. Some of the best content generally is on Twitter with the quartering streets. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. True. And Made we, for great content. We would not have got that without Elon buying Twitter. That's but true. God, if we're talking about future diddy, I'm gonna have to say book banning. All right. I'm gonna book have to banning. put my vote in for book banning. I will. I'll move book banning onto the second round, uh, and we have we have one more matchup for the left side. Then we'll move to the right side. Okay. We've got, th- and this one might be a tough one. I think it's a mismatch in terms oh, of um, right, in right. terms of skill and putridity. Oh. We've got Kanye becoming a Nazi, and we've got the response and just overall effect in the media of the Russia Ukraine invasion. Hmm. It's a difficult one because the Russia Ukraine invasion direct material harm, people dying, right? Yeah. You know, it's an it's an invasion of another country, but Kanye becoming a Nazi, I mean, that's like the that's putrid like def- that, that is, a that definition. Is putrid. That Prime is putrid. example, right? But God, God, if we're talking about the Ukraine response, then you have all the awful takes that came From out both of sides, so yeah. many fucking people with regards Even to Even people it. on our side. But fuck, I feel like I feel like this matchup, it's like a mm, 
it's like a first seed versus like a seventh seed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think <laughs> I think the first seed is gonna have to go to Kanye. It's got to, right? That's it so has putrid. To. That's it's when he went on Alex Jones and he said, I can't say what they're saying, but let me bring out a puppet to tell you. <laughs> and he pulls out a fucking net. And says, look, this is my pale netting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be that. That's a top 10 moment this year. That's a, that's, that's a top five like, moment this it, year. It, it could be recency bias again, like I said before. But just the fact that like Kanye coming out as a Nazi like that, it wasn't on my bingo card is all I'll say. And, uh, on the, in the interview with Gavin McGinnis? That's yeah. that's a guy who yeah. uh, fucked the dildo just to prove how straight he is. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. However, when you're conservative, it gets a little different. There's some subtext there. Anyway, anyway, I digress. On the interview with him, Gavin McGinnis said, "Well, Kanye, like, even though black people are more likely to commit crime, when I meet a black person, I come at him with a clean slate. Like, I assume they've never done anything wrong. Do you do that with Jewish people?" And Kanye said, "No." Yeah, he tried to give him an out. I was like, "Fuck." I was like, fuck. And then later on in that interview, when Gavin said, well, would you hire a Jewish person to help work on your campaign? And Kanye said, uh, actually, I'd only do it if I could have cameras on them 24-7. What the fuck? That's putrid. Like, yeah. that's fucking insane. That's a putrid take right there. It is. It is. All right, moving on to the right side of our bracket here. Oh, goodness. Uh, I put this first one in here for you. Okay. It is CPAC and Victor Orban that's, that's versus cool. the GOP's orgy problem with the Madison Cawthorn scandal and all that. So that's a tough matchup right there. Mm, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's like a fourth and fifth seat. Yeah. It's like a yeah, fourth and fifth yeah. seat. Yeah, the Victor Orban story was nuts. It could right? go either way. It could flip. Because mm -hmm. the, the way that the GOP has embraced a literal fascist who banned gay marriage in his country uh, is overall against immigration, wants to create a more pure white ethno state despite being from Hungary. Yeah, yeah. Like the contradictions that this is just showing with regards to fascism as an ideology being bad are palpable. Yeah. Like it's nuts. The irony here is crazy. Right. The irony here is crazy. All the things they do in Hungary is crazy. And seeing the GOP, the American GOP, embrace them with open arms. And authoritarian fascists, yeah. That's nuts. Yeah, that That's is nuts. that is nuts. And, but, then the, oh. and then the or GOP orgy problem, Madison Cawthorn unveiling that he was invited to have sex with old people. Like, that's gas because, like, everybody everybody for my entire lifetime has always joked about how politicians are always fucking each other. Like, in the yeah. back. they're always doing these crazy sex parties. Like, all the D.C. sex orgies, D.C. Drano, you know what I mean? They got to yeah. drain all the come out. They got to. Got to. How else are they going to build up? It's that, cocaine, and caffeine. That's how they operate. Uh, come cocaine and caffeine, the three baby. Cs. Let's, if this wasn't the Hit Award show, that'd be the name of this episode right there. <laughs> We got to reuse that at some point. Shit, shit, shit. Yeah. But God, dude, I, 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 I want to say it's the GOP orgy problem because like okay. Victor Orban is just bad. Yep. But GOP's really orgies are putrid because that's not something I want to think about. That's true. That is true. <laughs> so I'll, I'll move GOP orgy problem imagine, to the next one. Imagine Kevin McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Kevin McCarthy inviting you to an orgy. Yeah. And you feel compelled to say yes because he's your boss. With other like members of the GOP too. Like who, who else is in this orgy? Like who else is there? Is it Mitch McConnell? Mm-hmm. Joe Manchin. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. And we'll, we'll probably never know. God, Hopefully I wish. We'll know one day. I wish. I wish. You know, ultimately, my goal maybe could be to become a senator. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go undercover. I've talked about going undercover in the Republican Party for a we long time. We could do it. We could do it. I could definitely do it. I know so many things. I'm chronically online, right? Yeah. Going undercover just to get invited to one of these things, just to see who's there. Yeah. Just to see what it's like. Because it's like, what, what I'm picturing in my head is, you know that episode of The Boys? Yeah. I can't remember what it was oh, called. shit. I don't know. Hero Mania? Hero Gasm. Hero Gasm. Hero Gasm. Like, that's what I'm picturing, but just like old people that nobody likes. Yeah. Um, I would I would go. And look, I'd, I'd enjoy myself. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm there, I might as well stay. Hey, yo, hey, yo, I'm here. I'd like to party. All right. Our next matchup here. GOP Orgy Pro moved on to round two. Next matchup is uh, Ron DeSantis does human trafficking mm -hmm. versus Roe v. Wade getting overturned. Most putrid news mm. cycle. Mm. Another toughie. Another news toughie. cycle? Roe v. Wade. Got to be Roe, Roe v. Wade. Wade's got to be it. I mean, it's still happening, right? It's still happening. People are still talking about it. There's so many things that came out of it. There's like six episodes dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's, yeah, a, that's yeah, a good one. Yeah, Roe v. Wade getting overturned. Not only is it just like materially bad, right? Not to overshadow human trafficking. Oh, of that course was not. very bad. Like that was like Ron DeSantis doing that political stunt. Very bad. But it, it, do, it doesn't have the power. Uh, like oh, Roe no. v. Wade does. It no, just it doesn't. Does like it this does is not. 
This is a what? What would this be like? A two versus a six for sure. Yeah. Like the 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 human trafficking story is like what they use. Like they do it to get back in the news. Like Greg yep. Abbott and Ron DeSantis do it just to get their own personal brands back in the news. Well, yeah, they it's their deal to get back into the game. Right? Exactly. exactly. That's yeah. that's how they stay relevant. Now the next one is uh it's it's a matchup between what is a woman not the documentary but just generally the, the, trans the question panic, okay the trans panic the, the all the fear mongering and just like the dialogue okay, around career. yeah all of that versus Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema constantly ruining everything oh. those two news cycles mm-hmm. see see again here Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema ruining everything I'd argue that this is that that's that's just bad that's not necessarily putrid okay because again, when I think of putrid, I'm thinking of mandatory penis inspections. I'm thinking of Kanye West. I'm thinking of Kanye West. That's that's what's going on. Okay. I'm thinking of rim job texts. So uh so transphobia is moving gonna on. I'm going to have to give it to transphobia here. Yeah, transphobia uh got it. I think it's got to move on to round 2. There's some notable moments that came out of transphobia this year. Yeah, transphobia really carried the new cycle in many respects. <laughs> uh-huh. And then the last one on the right side before we move on to round 2 mm-hmm. is The Death of the Queen <laughs> versus Joe Biden's speech on democracy. You remember the Joe Biden speech? Yeah, the, the the fascist one, the, the, one the red the background, red. Yeah. the fist up. Yeah, yeah. So Biden's speech God, versus the death of the good. queen. I, I got to give it to the queen here. Death I, of that the was, queen. That's, a, that's like in, in the in the time that I've been on Twitter and participating in Twitter shenanigans. That is just the the most notable event that has ever happened. Yeah, that that made me smile. <laughs> <laughs> it, it cracked through the cold an episode fortress that is it. my heart, and it made me smile. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think in terms of putridity, the death of the queen did have some crazy takes pop up, specifically from conservatives that like, you know, Tucker Carlson did his whole bit about how much he loved the oh, queen. Oh, how they were pro-monarchy. Uh, but, conservatives yeah. came on as pro-monarchy. We had all of that happen, which is pretty putrid. But I think, I don't know, Joe Biden's speech, something about it just really got them. It That's really true. got the conservatives riled up. It really got they them. They were mauling. I, they, they were so angry to be called fascists. Uh, and I, I wouldn't think that would have happened just for something as simple as like a speech. Like, yep. all he's doing is giving a speech. And it's like the content of the speech wasn't even, like, anything crazy. It, it, Joe Biden gives speeches all the time. It would not nearly have been as big if they didn't hype it up to be that big. You know what and I they mean? And got, they got one picture of him with, like, his fist up doing, like, a yeah, yeah and with the red background where they cropped the blue out of it. Yeah. It's like, it's where it was like, just uh, a flag in the back. But, yeah, so both are putrid. Which one are you going with? I'm going to have to go with the uh, – I'm going to have to go with not Joe Biden. Death of the Queen? Death of the Queen. Death of the Queen. Got to be Death of the Queen. All right. That one's moving on to round two. And we move back to our left side with our new matchup. Okay. The FBI raid on Donald Trump and their Hunter Biden dick laptop story. <sighs> Tough one. Let's similar matchup. Let's break this down. Mm-hmm. Like axiomatically here. Let's break these stories down to their core. Like okay. Trump FBI raid. You've got like, oh my God, he violated the Espionage Espionage Act. Oh mm-hmm. my God, look at all these documents he took. Like you can't take those. When o- when Obama took those, his got taken away too. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like all these like weird technical boring law things. Sorry, Jen. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. However, when, when you're talking about Hunter Biden's laptop, at the core of Hunter Biden's laptop is a dick. The, the insistent <laughs> need for conservatives to drop revenge porn yeah. on their political enemy's son. Yeah. yeah. To, to drop pictures of man's cock. Just the need to see it the and need the need to, to drop it. it. The, the, <laughs> the, the itch in the back of their brain, the, the, the unscratchable itch. That they just cannot get rid of to find more information about Hunter Biden's cock. Mm-hmm. They've spawned whole whole projects yeah. surrounding it with Project Veritas. That guy has has just slingshotted his way into the mainstream. Soon, soon it's talking gonna about be, another man's dick. Soon it's gonna be the Hunter Biden dick laptop story will be a part of like congressional archives because they're gonna do investigations on it in the Absolutely. Republican House. Absolutely, the, the the new uh, House GOP uh, Judiciary Committee. Yeah, they're going to do investi- the intelligence committee will do investigations. They're going to launch a formal formal investigation on Hunter Biden's cock. Yeah. They're going to say this and is that's putrid. This is unequivocally has to be Hunter Biden's dick. Look at the length, look at the girth, look we, at the width. We might we very look at the well circumference. might we very well might get images of Hunter Biden's dick into the congressional archives for everyone As to see public for, information for posterity. A, a, a picture of Hunter Biden fucking hookers and doing drugs. Yeah. May very well become public information forever. That's crazy, and that's got to win. Yeah. I, I hate to knock out the Trump raid, but that's that's got to take it. You know, you've made an excellent argument. I'm convinced. <laughs> you've made an excellent argument. Uh, Hunter Biden's dick moves on to the third round, maybe to win it all soon. Who maybe, knows? Maybe. Maybe. It could. It very well could. Very Next well matchup, could. most putrid, wave of book bannings versus Nazi West. Uh, Yadolf uh, Hitler. 
Kanye becoming a Nazi. See, this one, this one is basically like it, insidious systemic harm versus just insane rhetoric. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right? Insane it, rhetoric that might incite more harm. Insane yeah. rhetoric that might in, incite more implicit harm. We have explicit harm versus implicit harm here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If, if I'm taking these matchups and I'm breaking them down to what they are. And now, you, you're right. Implicit versus explicit. And explicit, easier to deal with. Easier for us to deal with, especially. Easier Explain why it's bad. systemically to snuff out. However, explicit might be more putrid. I mean, does, isn't within putridity, is there not a uh, an element of how, you know, explicit on the face it is? Isn't putrid 100%. to be something to be perceived? Oh, it's, uh, we're great points here. The philosophy <laughs> minor is really coming out. That's what I'm saying. That's what it's, I'm saying. It's really, you should use that in your thesis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we take the example of, of Hunter Biden's dick... <laughs> We we also have to take into account with these stories, right? Who who Kanye West like is mm-hmm. the national figure that Kanye West is? Because a lot of these True. book burnings, they're they're isolated. Like healing sexual trauma being banned at the Davidson School District may get a, they may get away with it there. Yeah, but w- is it necessary to say that it will be gotten away with in other school districts across the country? There's a lot of school districts we have going on. Again, many, explicit many, many. harm, very bad, horrible thing that's happened. Yeah, but Kanye West is such a national figure. So many people look loved, up to this guy. Loved, yeah, and so many normies that aren't chronically in line, aren't fucking politic pilled. Yeah. Are looking at Kanye and thinking, "Hey, bro, Voltaire was right." <laughs> yeah, that Voltaire quote. That's not Voltaire saying that exactly. And I think on top of that, the things—if we want to consider the things leading up to Kanye openly coming becoming a Nazi as a part of that news cycle—I mm-hmm. mean, like every conservative was on board with him right until the point when he, at which he said, "I am a Nazi. I love it." For Hitler. sure. <laughs> and then they just said, most of them just said, "Hey, just he drop that, it, and though. I'll support." Yeah, exactly. He doesn't mean it. And they tried to run defense until they realized, like, I literally can't. Like, he just keeps saying it's yeah. Jewish people. That's, yeah. It's their fault. Yeah. It's I'm, difficult. I have to give it to Kanye. Here. It's got to be Kanye. All it's right. got to be. Kanye's moving on to the third round. And we go back to the right side of our bracket. Our next matchup okay. is the GOP orgy problem versus Roe v. Wade being overturned. For most putrid gonna... news cycle. Again, I'm gonna have to give it to Roe v. Wade. That's what I was thinking. I think I'm gonna have to I give it to Roe v. Winner. Wade here for sure. Because like GOP orgy, it's like it's it's funny. It's funny enough to beat out its previous opponent. Yeah, yeah. But is it funny enough to outweigh the 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 harmful putridity that is Roe v. Wade See, being overturned? You know, I think I think if there's an actual if there's a game between Roe v. Wade and the GOP orgy problem, if there's a dance, if it, yeah, I think I think GOP orgy problem gets an early lead. For but sure. I think they blow it in the late game. Absolutely. <laughs> I, think, I think they blow the lead later on because, you know, GOP Orgy Problem has novelty. It's shocking. It's definitely putrid. But then you start thinking more about the Roe v. Wade being overturned situation yeah. and every single news cycle and argument and debate and just everything that spawned from it. And Roe v. Wade, it just it has the stamina to stay in the game. Because necessarily, when talking about the Roe v. Wade news cycle, you have all of these horrible stories that have come out across the year about women having to travel across states, yeah. women not being able to afford to travel across states. You have literal children being denied access that they would have once had mm-hmm. because of an arbitrary ruling by the worst people of 2023. Right. Yeah. And strong contenders for the worst people, the people going to ruin 2023. Yeah. Right? It's got to be. It's got to yeah. be I mean, Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade's got the staying power. It's got. It's got endurance here. It's got it's the got legs. composition on the Supreme got Court. Got legs. It's uh, and it's still around with us today. So it's got to be Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade sure. wins in For that sure. in that contest. Uh, the last one of the second round is the trans panic. What is a woman panic versus the death of the queen? Trans panic. Got to be right. Trans panic again for, for for the same reasons that we talked about the last. The last yeah. matchup here. Trans Panic's got staying power. Yeah. The queen, she died once. She's never going to die again. Yeah. I mean, if we're lucky, she'll never come back to life, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. It's got to be the Trans Panic. I mean, because that still exists today. It's going to exist into the next year and probably going to be a main issue of 2024. It'll be a while. It's going to um, be a while before so that goes away. Bad. And the queen, she went away. Yeah. Yeah. She's gone. <laughs> she went away forever. Hilarious news story. <laughs> like, hilarious week of news for the queen. Um, but, uh, like, yeah. conservatives aren't going to come out as pro monarchy again until, like, Meghan Merkel does something yeah exactly and then they're just going to be racist again it, then they will be racist and they'll come out and be like yeah this is why the monarchy is good yes yeah uh we're on to round three okay. getting to the end okay. now okay this is the semifinals it right? is the semifinals Whew. it is hunter biden's dick laptop yes. versus kanye west becoming no, nazi you can't no you can't do this hey, you did it to yourself this you is your choices no, this no, is gage no, picks no 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 i don't Write in the comments right now who would win in your <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss for words on how to even even weigh these two matchups. I know. It's difficult, isn't it? 
God, because like I Kanye West, it's it's recent. It is it is ongoing. Someone are maybe maybe its legs have even pitter pattered out. Shocking for a fan of Kanye West like yourself. <laughs> oh, whoa now. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who passively enjoys Kanye West's music. Yeah. <laughs> God, but it's like it's like Hunter Biden's laptop. That's gonna be here for a while. Yeah. It's gonna be con- congressional news. But it's if Kanye be becomes president, <laughs> Kanye is running a presidential campaign. Yeah, with yeah. Nick Flint as an actual hey, Nazi. Alma say everyone made fun of Trump when manager. he was running. Everyone made fun of Trump when he was running in 2016. So true. I'm gonna say so nobody took Trump seriously, and that's nobody. why he won. Exactly. That's yeah. why he won. God, it's tough. This to, is a, it's this a mismatch, is, isn't it? Different this different is, skills. This is a tough pick, and i i wanna I wanna try to separate myself yeah. from the recency of the Kanye West story. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. I wanna separate myself from that. Because that's what's in my mind. That's at the forefront of my mind. Yeah, and see, like the the thing is, like if if Hunter Biden's dick laptop story was in a game versus the Kanye West story, right? It, Kanye's Kanye becoming a Nazi. That team has superstars. Right? Absolutely, it's got all star superstars. Right they are in the news. They're doing photo ops. They're getting brands. They're going crazy. But yeah. Hunter Biden's dick laptop story, they've got institutional news or they've got institutional power, institutional that's mind. Oh, so true. They got a strategy for the game, and they want it. They want to stay in the news story. In fact, they were designed to be in the news. So it's it's a hard matchup. It's I don't know who wins that. It's such a pressure. I don't, I don't know who wins it, and I feel like I might be I might be picking the wrong choice when I when I pick Kanye West. Kanye West. When going I pick to the Kanye finals. West, it might be the wrong choice. But I, I feel like I I feel like I have to, and I feel like Kanye West might win it. Yeah, maybe. But uh, our our uh, maybe our listeners can tell us differently. But Kanye maybe West going to the finals. You can drop your brackets on your Instagram story and tag. <laughs> yeah, Kanye West is he's going to the finals. Uh, and then our, our other semifinals match is Roe v. Wade being overturned versus the What is a Woman trans panic. Another tough one. This is it. It's like it's like what what Hunter Biden's laptop is to Kanye West is what What is a Woman is to Roe v. Wade. Yeah. In that in that Hunter Biden and Kanye West are both these stories that are just just absolutely unhinged uh-huh. with regards to like uh-huh. like rhetoric and the things that are coming out of them. However, what is a woman? What is a woman and Roe v. Wade are absolutely unhinged and putrid with regards to the real impact that they have on people's lives. Yeah, if you could somehow combine these two stories, right? The trans panic and the yeah. abortion panic. If you could put those into one, unstoppable force. In unstoppable the scene. force. Unstoppable. I mean, like, the, we would, ne- this is the only thing we'd ever hear about if they could be combined. 100%. 100%. And, and sometimes they are combined. I was going to say, the GOP conservatives have tried to loop them together. I remember seeing a Michael Knowles uh, debate. It was basically a debate, kind of an interview type yeah. thing. But there was this debate. He was debating with this woman, and she was saying something along the lines of, like, pregnant people deserve bodily autonomy, et cetera. And, and he's, he's like, like, pregnant people? Yeah. You mean pregnant women? Right. He was like, oh, pregnant people mm, <laughs> why wouldn't you say women mothers and it's yeah. like they try to loop it together but they haven't found a successful way to do so because it's like these are different issues at least for now they and are and it's like it's like kind of corny yeah it's very corny and i feel like mainstream conservatives also recognize that because like uh birthing people terminology like that is chronically online oh yeah it is absolutely chronically online you have to go to the the, the depths the pits the twitter the abyss and also just saying like pregnant person's already a common term Exactly. You know what I mean? Like that's not that's that's a thing that I'm I'm pretty sure people have said before all of this like um uh, just this general trans panic and like more attention towards gender identities was around anyway. Like, yeah, like it's a just like a person. thing you say. Sometimes you just refer to people as persons. Yeah, exactly. Like that's just that's really all that is. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And they haven't been able to like attach that moral outrage to it. But God, I think I'm gonna have to go. Roe v. Wade. Okay, it's it's like it's it's it flashed. It yeah. flashed for so long, and it's flashing so hard. It's like a solar flare. Yeah, you know, I, it's got to stay in power. It's got to stay in power. But now comes the hardest decision. And for now you. in the finals, it's like it, it Roe feels, v. Wade versus Kanye West. It does feel like we have an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object here. It feels like we have the cold indifference of the universe versus the indomitable human spirit. Exactly, you know Kanye I mean? West being indomitable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins? Nobody knows. I, I don't know. I, I I don't know if necessarily I could pick between these two, right? Because again, they're they're polar opposites on the scale of putridity. Mm-hmm. They they are. They are. They're opposites, but they're both putrid in their own ways. I oh, mean, oh my god, hard, so hard decision. So similar yet so different at the same time. Yeah, at the same time. God, God, because you got to like, choose one though. Got to. You, we need a winner today. If, are, if if it was Hunter Biden's laptop versus Roe v. Wade, it'd be an easy Roe v. Wade. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. God, we're talking about what's putrid here. (laughs) We're talking about what's putrid, not what's just generally bad. Before you pick, I would say whoever wins this year, 
they win off a three point buzzer beater. Got to be right. Like God that, that's got to be how they win. Be. It's got to be neck and neck the entire game, and then one of them just hits a crazy three pointer uh, to beat the buzzer, and uh, they somehow take the victory in the finals. This is more intense than the World Series. It's the championship game. Oh my goodness! But if if it's a championship game, right there, both both teams, both teams mm-hmm. are going against each other. You got you got Milo Yiannopoulos, Nick Fuentes, and Kanye West mm-hmm. in a three v three game versus Clarence Thomas, <laughs> Samuel Alito, and like Brent Kavanaugh. Uh-huh. Maybe sub her in for Amy Coney Barrett. Yeah, well, maybe sub I, in for the other fucking guy on the court. Amy's definitely on the bench waiting to come in. Definitely or if we need bench. five on there, we can add like Alex Jones and Gavin McGinnis to their side. Oh, absolutely, five v five. This exactly. is a full court. This yeah, is no, stacked it's a, court. It's going a full on court right game here. for sure. It's fucking. Uh, we got Alex Jones, mm-hmm. Kanye West, star player. Yeah, oh, yeah, star player. Nick Fuentes. This is an all star team. Nick Fuentes, Milo Yiannopoulos, not necessarily an all star, but he he got his he nepotismed his way on the team. Oh, he did. Yeah, and his yeah, dad owns the team. Exactly. And Gavin McGinnis, somewhat more obscure, but again, he nepotismed his way into it. And you know, he's solid on defense. You know solid I mean? on defense. Solid on defense. Solid on um, trying to play, do recovery. Yeah, for yeah. other people. He's good on the rebounds for sure. Somewhat failing. Kanye West, he he's more of an individual player. Oh yeah, he's the star guy. He's a selfish player. You know, he he's he's not the guy to pass the ball. He's going for trick shots. He's going for threes when he shouldn't. Yeah. Gets a little cocky. He doesn't pay attention to the play. And I think because he gets a little cocky when Ooh. he's matched up against Samuel Alito, uh-huh. Amy Coney Barrett, mm-hmm. Brett Kavanaugh, yeah. Clarence Thomas, and uh the other fucking guy. Neil Gorsuch. Yeah. Yeah. Neil Gorsuch, yeah. the unexpected player that comes in for the for the dunk. Exactly. Or maybe it's even Amy. Yeah. Maybe it's even yeah. Amy just coming in, just oh. Yeah, the unexpected, and that's the thing is like you know you got stars on the Nazi team, right? Yeah, but you got a well-oiled machine you on got SCOTUS. Consistency. You got a well-oiled machine that's getting funded by super PACs that we don't even know about yet. Say, their facility, their yeah. facility's crazy. Crazy. Their facility. training facility is nuts. Like Kanye, like they're operating out of a garage sometimes, right? In the most exactly. the most beat down studio you can imagine, despite all their wealth pooled together. It's true, 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 true. Uh, but SCOTUS, just that the institutional power, the institutional, the powers power. that be want them to. Win. Exactly. They do. They do. And it's when you take that, I think, I think maybe, I think maybe Clarence Thomas can sink a three from half court. Maybe he can. At the buzzer, he, he, he throws a shot. <laughs> yeah. Just out of nowhere. Maybe not even Clarence Thomas. Maybe Brett Kavanaugh gets in there. Dang. Maybe gets in. Personal foul, then bam. Oh, big but the per- refs don't catch it. Personal foul, like, like he's used to doing. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you don't you don't think Kanye comes through with an upset victory? I, I don't I don't I don't think so. I okay. don't think so. I think everything that happened with Roe v. Wade, all of the auxiliary stories surrounding it, uh just the all the harm that was done, Roe v. Wade has got to be the most future thing to happen this year. Roe v. Wade takes the finals. That's, that's what I'm gonna have to say. If you if you disagree with me, sound off in the comments. Sound hit us off, on Twitter, yeah. hit us on Instagram. Do whatever you got to do. Yeah, we'll we'll post the bracket. We'll post a blank version with like just the uh, beginning yeah. sixteen. You all can fill it out on your own. Maybe share your own uh, share your own ratings. Share your own uh, your, your your own outcomes. Uh, but for now, it looks like Roe v. Wade takes the cake as the most putrid oh. news cycle in 2022, beating all of its other competitors. It was a it was tough. It was, it was a tough, tough battle. But I, I think ultimately, I made the correct decision. Hard uh, uh, game day, game day choices. I I got in there. I made I made the right decisions. You did. I no. I would. I think I would agree. I think all these are defensible. I, um, I think an argument could have been made for. Um, I don't know Kanye to just sink a crazy three from range. I think an argument could have been made. Maybe Nick Fuentes coming up with a layup. Like he he's slithering through like the fucking little mm. snake he is and getting yeah. into it. Just ah. yeah. And then right after he takes a picture of Marjorie Taylor Green on the side. <laughs> Marjorie <laughs> she, Taylor Green's she, actually she, like water boy. You know what I mean. Marjorie Taylor Green's sitting there and she's actually got court side seeds watching the game well you know she almost got drafted over nick fuentes exactly she's bitter about it <laughs> yeah exactly but but she still supports the team you know what i mean naturally because there's some naturally. holdouts on the supreme court that won't get rid of rights fast enough and we, we've got the other members of the supreme court kind of just like being a little complicit yeah. on the sidelines yeah. not really doing anything they could come in and like foul out a little bit but yeah. they they don't really do anything it's a yeah. it's a it's a bad institution yeah i mean I should, if kanye and his crew could have been more disciplined maybe they get the upset victory exactly but scotus but they just they don't have the synergy that scotus has scotus just too strong they're not they're not working together like they yeah. are to draft their opinions yeah um, we've got milo yabas leaving the campaign team yeah We've got just the general incompatibility of fascists. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's it's tough. They they fumbled the bag right <laughs> at the end. Yeah, Nick Fuentes hating that he works for a black man. Exactly. Like hating Ex- exactly. it. Exactly. But it's, doing uh, it because he has to. Uh, Whereas the Supreme Court, you know, they may not have like uh, characteristics that they hate about each other necessarily, like race and gender and that kind of uh-huh. thing, and that lets them work together very well. So real, real shit. 
Real uh, shit. And that ends our little section on uh, on P Trinity. I think that's gonna that's yep. gonna bring a close to the first annual mm-hmm. Head in the Office award show. I, that ends us out on our our last episode of the year. You got any New Year's resolutions? Oh God, probably uh, just fucking do the show better. Do the show better. That's do a good show one. better because that's um, all I'd be thinking about. I'm gonna. My New Year's resolution is to be a worse person overall. Be, oh, not, maybe get myself on one of these lists. Yeah. Oh, get. Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't know if I want to. I just want to be more malicious and evil. You know what I mean? Oh, I want to. I want to walk through my days with actual malice I, I, in my <laughs> eyes. I want to make more people mad. For sure, that's yeah, definitely a goal, yeah, and I yeah. want to get stitched more on TikTok. I want to bring some of those Instagram comments that we get on our reels to TikTok, so that I can actually reply to them in a video and like, yeah, degrade a little bit more. And this might this might run counter my uh, my previous resolution, but I also want to give up more. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll be trying too hard sometimes. True. I want to give up more. True. Yeah. With my schoolwork explicitly, I want to give up more. Exactly. I, I want to start throwing in the towel you know, when I'm, I've been sitting there for too it's, long. It's a matter of mental health. Exactly. You know what I mean? I want to give exactly. up more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my New Year's resolution overall would be to prioritize my mental health. Exactly. And that may include giving up more. Yeah. Being meaner. You know what would make my mental health better? <laughs> More patrons. <laughs> More patrons. That would <laughs> that would really help, I think. Um, and to the people that are making my mental health great right now, I want to give you all a special thanks, especially for all of you that have all of you that have to stuck the around the entire year. Audience. To the live studio audience, to everyone that makes the show possible, give, our beautiful, give yourself, beautiful patrons. Give yourself a round of applause. That's right. That's right. For for sticking through with us through all this entire year, throughout this entire episode. Mm-hmm. I want to thank all of you, uh, but especially our patrons. Especially the ones that make the show possible. So special thanks to Cricket Scrabble Layouts, Nikki Nine Lives, Kaden Kraut, Lord T, Chris the Postman, Christy Beck, Talia Katz, Forty Percent Spite, Andrew Harris, Mike Chaplinsky, Mattias T, the B Plot, Omar Zuno, Clayton LaFed, Mark Yeager, Sarah McRoberts, Derek Mazina, Dylan B, Kaz, Caleb Joy, Jim Bob's, Carl D, Rich Shore, Otari, Gavin Mayer, Maldonado, Hunter W, Fergalaki. Max Vasquez, Jacob Rogers, Colt Mooberry, Fixer Punk, Jim Egbers, Jeff Muzzy, Ted Cruz's Boy Toy, Bagel Burrito, Cincy Alex, Brad, Joe Stenstrom, Adrian Sandoval, Chloe Sam 601, Judah Marshall, Colleen Cuts, and my mom. Thank you all for supporting the show on Patreon. It wouldn't be possible without you. We couldn't do cool, funny, goofy stuff like this without you. Uh, and I'm excited for a, uh, a positive 2023. I, I'm, I'm incredibly excited for what 2023 awaits. I'm very eager for the show to pop off within the next three months so mm-hmm. I don't have to actually use my degree and get a real job. Yeah, that'd be tough. That, that, that'd that suck. Yeah. I, I, the quality of the show would go down if I had to um, become a wage, wage cuck. Just know that my creativity is at its peak when I'm not tied down by the employment. Exactly. By formal employment opportunities. For, exactly. Yeah. Because exactly, I already do shit on the side. Yeah, exactly. But like a real like a real big boy job, like W nines and shit, ten ninety nine for like I can't, uh, you know what I mean. And if uh, if you all want to see us at our creative peak, check out the Patreon. Get your friends on the Patreon. Keep sharing the show, joining the community, participating, and uh, you know we thank you. Generally, we love you. all the fucking money you come across. <laughs> <laughs> all the money you're working hard for. Get us out of here. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great week.